outstanding shift in today for his team. And just Jack Harrison coming in just to solidify that right-hand side in front of Seamus Coleman, who we've not even mentioned in the second half. He's not got forward as much. And then Beto coming on just to provide that option for Everton down the channels, pinning the Burnley centre-backs. See if they can get up the pitch. And then Burnley, obviously, have to go for it now. Chuck the kitchen sink at it, as they say. Rodriguez coming on. Probably a change of approach from Vincent Company's team. They're going to have to get the ball into Everton's box somehow. Seven minutes remain of normal time. Mansfield have got what will be a consolation. Mansfield one, Crawley Town four. They're dropping out of the automatic places in League Two. These are the latest scores in League Two. Wimbledon one, Salford nil. Accrington nil, Crew nil. Barrow nil, Swindon two. Bradford City still lead Gillingham by a goal to nil. Colchester one, Wrexham one. Forest Green nil, MK Dons two. Grimsby one, Newport nil. Mansfield one, Crawley four. Morecambe nil, Doncaster two. Notts County two, Harrogate nil. Notts County, that could be their first home win in 2024. Sutton 1, Stockport County, the leaders 3, Tranmere 1, Walsall 3. Goal at Craven Cottage, Hayden Moran. And Newcastle do now have the lead, stung into action by the perceived injustice as the disallowed goal. Bruno Guimaraes running in to follow up, smashing into the bottom corner. Full and nil, Newcastle 1. And a goal at Molyneux, Mas Faruqi. They've turned it around, West Ham now lead. This goal came straight from a James Ward-Prowse corner. It kind of swerved its way back in. In past Joe Cesar, in just inside the, the right-hand corner post. So West Ham now lead after trailing. Wolves 1, West Ham 2. McNeil forward for Everton, sends over across from the left. Well cleared by Estev under pressure. Six yards out for his own goal, out for an Everton throw far side the right. Yeah, Dwight McNeil just fed down the channel. He run onto the ball and then he looked for that early cross inside the box and Estev has been absolutely outstanding at the back for Burnley. He's had a really good game. And another excellent clearance there just to deny Beto that if he got his foot on that, it would have been perhaps his first touch of the game. Yeah, Motherwell have got an equaliser at uh, Dundee. Dundee 2, Motherwell 2, Middlesbrough 2, Swansea City 0. Ball in from the right-hand side, McNeil couldn't control it, picked up by Murich. These are the latest scores in League One then. Uh, Blackpool still lead Cambridge by a goal to nil. Bolton 0, third place Bolton Wanderers 1. Burton 0, Oxford United 4. Charlton 2, Barnsley 1, Charlton looking to extend their unbeaten run to 11, Exeter leads Stevenage by a goal to nil, Lake Norian 2, Cheltenham 0, Northampton 1, Carlisle United 0, Carlisle United will be relegated, Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1, Reading 0, Lincoln 1, Wigan 0, Port Vale 0 are the other latest scores, we have under five minutes remaining and Everton still lead by a goal to nil. Let's get an update from Northampton, Mark Webber. Yeah, it's Northampton 1, Carlo United 0. The City and Lakes have six minutes to swim against the tide and save their League One status. They're not showing much endeavour then, I have to say. It's still 1-0 to Northampton. That's the man very much in the flow. Reading have equalised at home to Lincoln. Reading 1, Lincoln 1. As uh, Burnley down to ten men after that, O'Shea sending off midway through the second half. Pass the ball back to, uh, to Murich. Murich... Short forward ball, Brownhill is there to take it off him. Berger, Everton with uh, Decore. So it wasn't, didn't Decore didn't leave the field then, did he? And, uh, yeah, Ashley, Ashley Young went off. It was Ashley Young who'd uh, who'd gone off. The uh, the little app that we get had told us that it was going to be Decore as he slides into that challenge and has done. Oh, I was going to say he's done exceptionally well, and he's a judge to have fouled Esther. That was a, yeah. a strange decision. I, I, I think Estev has done really well again against Beto. The ball's just fed into the channel and it's a foot race between the two of them. Beto tries to get his body in, shoulder bar just Estev, and I think the positioning of Estev just means that he gets the ball first, he does, and Beto catches him. On that far side, Coleman up to, uh, to Beto, tries to lay it off towards Gomez. Gomez now in the centre circle, forward ball. He releases Beto, Beto is away, Beto goes to ground, referee Michael Oliver has a look at it and says nothing. Yeah, I think he's looking for it. The crowd don't think so, though. They've gone mad. They think it's a penalty, but I'm just watching the replay and I, the first glance in real time, I think it was really good defending. Beto is looking for that, he takes the touch across. I think it's a Stev's body, it's not a penalty for me. He lumbered his way towards goal, didn't he? Yep. He never felt that he was going to go clear at any point and get the shot away. 
And uh, the outcry of that just gives you another indication of the nerves because Everton are edging closer to three valuable points elsewhere in the Premier League. Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3, Fulham 0, Newcastle 1, Luton 1, Bournemouth 1, Wolves 1, West Ham United 2. Let's get another update from Ailey at Easter Road. Wilson Johnson have gone back in front. They lead by two goals to one. Tony Gallagher with his first ever goal in senior football. Going, uh, knocking in from a corner kick. Vital for St Johnston in their bid to avoid the playoff place at the bottom of the table. It is Hibernian 1, St Johnston 2. Two minutes remain of normal time. Burnley have got a free kick almost on the halfway line. Murich to take it. Goes out towards that far side. Volleyed away by Beto. It was Colchester 1, Wrexham 1. There's been a goal. Paul Scott. It is now Colchester 1, Wrexham 2. The well side coming from behind to take the lead a long throw from the left hand side headed in by Max Kluworth glancing into the far bottom corner Colchester 1, Wrexham 2 so the lead is, the lead is Stockport third place Wrexham and fourth place MK Dons all winning second place Mansfield losing heavily at home as we have 60 seconds remain there's been a goal at Leicester City, Aaron Paul. Leicester potentially won it. The subs are on the pitch. Gorgeous ball from Eunice Hatchett. And at the back post, it was Steffi Mavadini with the downward center. They've huffed, they've puffed, they've blown the Birmingham house down. Leicester 2, Birmingham 1. Remember earlier, Ipswich Town lost in the East Anglian derby at Carrow Road. Norwich 1, Ipswich Town 0. These are the latest scores elsewhere in the Championship as that scoreline, as it stands, will take Leicester top. Blackburn 0, Southampton 0, Cardiff 1, Hull 3. Coventry City still lead Leeds United by two goals to one. Huddersfield 0, Millwall 0. Leicester 2, Birmingham 1. Middlesbrough 2, Swansea 0. QPR 0, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Uh, and that would actually take them level with Birmingham City on 42 points. Stoke 2. Two West Brom 2, Sunderland 0, Bristol City 0, Watford and Preston remains goalless at Vicarage Road. No other goals elsewhere. We're about to find out how much added on time there will be. And this is still tight. Yeah, and Beto, you know what, he's just come on and he's causing all sorts of problems to Burnley. He's just getting his body in, he's just protecting the ball, he's causing mayhem up there and he's just disrupting the flow of the game. And that's exactly what Everton need to do at the moment. They're just getting up the park, teasing Burnley into playing out again, and then they're going to try and nick it. What have Burnley got left in them? Five minutes of added on time. We will find out now in those subsequent minimum five minutes to be added on. As Cullen floats the ball forward, off the chest for Mikolenko, closed down by Rodriguez, balloons up in the air, headed away by Branthwaite, handball, free kick to Everton. Lake Norian three, Cheltenham nil is the latest score in League One. Hasn't been pretty, but it's all one of those occasions when it's all about the result for Everton. 100%. It, it really hasn't. I mean, some of the football that Burnley have played in the first half was pretty, but Everton have been in this situation so many times where they haven't necessarily been the better team, but they've been the better team making better decisions when it really matters. And they've just been really pragmatic about their approach, just pushing Burnley back into areas where they're uncomfortable. Their worst run of form for 67 years is about to be banished. And it couldn't have come at a better time as Sean Dyche extremely animated in that technical area as Burnley with Bettinho with a back pass to Murich has to go long. Brantwaite doesn't misjudge that. I think the, the wind probably didn't help him out. Here is Rodriguez, passes the ball out now towards that far side. Goodmanson stands over the cross, headed away by Mikolenko. Cullen keeps it alive for Burnley. Here is uh, Brownhill, Berger joins the attack. The ten men still fighting here for Burnley. But Everton trying to keep them at bay from their penalty area. Berger forward, Amduni, challenge from Decore. Still they lose the ball. And Burnley win it back, Amduni, Decore again breaks it up and a break is on now for Everton. Decore running forward, it's two against two, he finds Beto. 
Beto forced a fraction out wide, edge of the area, Beto enters the penalty area, challenge comes in, ball runs behind for a corner, and there's been a late goal at Luton Town, Chris Cole. How big, how big could this be for Luton? They may have won it in the last minute of normal time, Carlton Morris just underneath the crossbar to poke in across into the corner, what a huge moment this could be for Luton, they lead Bournemouth by two goals to one into stoppage time. They are absolutely incredible, the way that they're always able to get late, late goals. So Luton have come from behind and lead Bournemouth by two goals to one. Corner taken short for Everton. Decore plays it in towards the penalty area. Here is James Garner, goes to ground inside the area, shot fired in from Harrison, blocks. He's actually stayed down as, uh, as Garner. Referee, though, Michael Oliver, looked like he had a good view of that. That wouldn't be sufficient to take them out of the relegation zone, incidentally. They would move level with Nottingham Forest on 25 points. Forest would stay out of the relegation zone because of their superior goal difference. The deadlock has been broken at Huddersfield. Katie Smith. And it could be a huge goal in the 94th minute. Huddersfield Town 1, Millwall 0. The corner from the right-hand side, the home side, have been pushing. The initial header saved, and then Healy, the substitute, putting it in the back of the net. Huddersfield Town 1, Millwall 0. We have 90 seconds remaining of added on time. Everton still lead by a goal to nil. Izzy Christensen. What Sean Dyche asks of his wide players, Dwight McNeil, Ashley Young, and then Jack Harrison, who's come on for Ashley Young, is such a big ask. A lot of lots of running. And Dwight McNeil has been absolutely superb for Everton. Burnley have got a free kick. Murich goes long for Burnley. Out it goes to that far side. Goodmanson in front of the travelling support. Can he work over the cross? By my watch, we're entering the last 60 seconds of the minimum. Five to be added on. Ball played out by Vettinho towards Goodmanson once again on the left. Goodmanson with a cross in over everybody's heads. Berger, right-hand side of the penalty area. Cullen makes the run forward, not utilised. Berger waits. Berger looks for the cross, blocked. Comes out to Vettinho, lifts it in first time, deep into the penalty area. Headed behind by James Garner. I don't think he got the shout. Corner kick to Burnley. No, it was a nervous header by the captain, Seamus Coleman. He's just communicating to Jordan Pickford and the players around him to say, give me a shout, lads, because he's just conceded a corner completely unnecessarily. Burnley are going to swing it in. So it's a corner kick far side the left. 15 seconds remain. Goodmanson with the outswinging corner. Tarkovsky meets it and then volleys the ball before it can hit the ground from his own header. And James Garner is in pursuit. And the ball then is played forward, it kept alive by Goodmanson, in play over on that far side. Goodmanson's cross from the left, headed away by Branthwaite once again. Harrison nicks it away from Esteb. Vincent Company just tried to push Harrison away. Sean Dykes is close, the referee blows the whistle. And Everton's worst run of form in 67 years has finally come to an end. A fortuitous goal on the stroke of half-time gives them three precious points, Izzy Christiansen. Absolutely massive. Three points for whoever won this game. And it's Everton. You can see the Burnley players on the floor. They're dead on their knees. They put in so much into that last 15 minutes with 10 men, but it just wasn't enough. And Everton are just clinging on. A huge three points for them. An enormous result for, uh, for Everton. Elsewhere, Carlisle relegated. They've conceded a second. Northampton 2, Carlisle 0. But down at the bottom of the table at Goodison Park, Everton 1, Burnley 0. And let's go straight to Mark Webber for details of Carlisle's relegation. Yes, Northampton Town 2, Carlisle United 0. 335 Carlisle fans stayed to the end to witness their club's short tenure in League One football. They witnessed what was probably what they've witnessed all season. Average performance is not clinical enough, and it may be some irony that the club they went up with uh, last season, Northampton Town, scored in the dying minutes when Ali Koike was just allowed to run the length of the field and tap home. Northampton Town 2, Carlisle United 0, Carlisle United are relegated. Oh, they're biting their fingernails at Luton, Chris Coles. Because this would be a colossal result if they can hold on. Into the final minute, six were added. We've played five, Luton 2, Bournemouth 1. The fans doing all they can to urge their team to victory at the moment the ball is exactly where Luton need it to be and that is in their possession if they can hold on for 45 seconds how huge this could be for them they lead Bournemouth by two goals to one
Still waiting for a winner at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. It's 3-3, Villa fought back through Watkins' brilliant header, but just now Douglas Louise has been booked. That means he'll serve a two-match ban. He really could have done without that. It was a little bit unlucky to get yellow, but there it is. A couple of minutes to go, Villa 3 Brentford three. By to Molyneux, Maz Faruqi. And we are still playing here as well. We're into about two and a half minutes left of stoppage time. Ten added minutes at the end of this second half. And it looks like that James Wall pass goal direct from a free kick, uh, corner rather, from the left in the 85th minute is going to be the winner for West Ham at the moment. Wolves trying to press for an equaliser late on, but they still trail 2-1 to West Ham. Can Newcastle hold on at the cottage? Henry? Still four added minutes remaining. Fulham pushing for that equaliser. The goal from Bruno Guimaraes after 80 minutes looks like it could give Newcastle a rare away win but Fulham trying to break that door down Fulham nil Newcastle won uh, we should have stayed with you Maz yeah because just as uh, we stopped talking Max Kilman has got the equaliser four walls from a corner it was swept in from the left hand side Kilman stood up powerfully jumped up tall beat Fabianski in the West Ham goal. It is 2-2, 99 minutes played now. Uh, Unai Emery is walking down the Aston Villa touchline, chuntering Pat Murphy. He's probably chuntering about Louise being booked again, serving a two-match ban, and the fact they've dropped three points, having been 2-0 up after an hour. Watkins, Rogers, three goals in nine minutes to Brentford. Zanka, Wimbreu, and we said Watkins equalised at ten minutes to go. Climactic game. How influential and relevant will it, be, will it prove? Villa three. Brentford three. Ipswich beaten at lunchtime. Leeds losing at three o'clock. Leicester going top of the championship. Aaron Paul. Goal from Dewsbury Hall and Mavadidi either side of a fortunate Jay Stansfield strike. Give Leicester a huge three points on an afternoon when they thought they may have only got one. John Ruddy excellent between the sticks of Birmingham. The Mavadidi's 87th minute strike has put Leicester back top of the championship. Leicester two, Birmingham one. Some of the players at Luton look emotionally exhausted. Chris Coles. They're on their knees, hands in heads. It's an incredible scene at Kenilworth Road because this is a big result for Luton. They've beaten Bournemouth by two goals to one more late heroics. They are remarkable, aren't they? Decimated by injuries, 10 games without a win, but they keep fighting. Carlton Morris, the captain, 90th minute, prodding home across. Jordan Clark had equalised in response to Marcus Tavernier's excellent opener for Bournemouth. Luton are not going anywhere. Did we expect anything less? Luton 2, Bournemouth 1. Uh, it looks like Huddersfield are going out to the bottom three this evening. They beat a Millwall by a goal to nil. That Wolves goal, by the way, hasn't been given yet. They've sent the referee to the screen to see whether a Wolves player is offside and inter uh, interfering in the vision of Lucas Fabianski. So they are checking that. Spoke about Huddersfield winning in the bottom three in the championship. Sheffield Wednesday are going to take all three points as well. John Akers. They've just got their second. QPR nil. Sheffield Wednesday two. It'll be the last kick of the game virtually. Masaba, the substitute, right-footed, smashes it into the roof of the net. On the break, what a massive win. QPR nil. Sheffield Wednesday oh, two. There are going to be a lot of nervous teams in the championship with Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield winning. And the Wolves goal has been ruled out. Mas for Ruki. Taiwanda Chirewa substitute standing in the line of vision as you say of Lucas Fabianski Tony Harrington sent to the pitch side monitor had a long old look at it couple of replays and that header for Max Kilman which you can hear the home fans aren't happy about they thought that was the equaliser in the 99th minute it has been ruled out so it's still Wolves, were, Wolves won rather West Ham 2 102 minutes played here now West Ham had a goal earlier on ruled out for a slightly soft foul that the, uh, the VAR team decided needed to be disallowed. Right, details of that Huddersfield win, Katie. Huddersfield Town 1, Millwall nil. Not much quality in the second half, but impetus always with Huddersfield. They put in a shift today, rewarded 94th minute, a header from Reese Healy. So they are out of the bottom three. They are just one point clear of Birmingham, but Millwall, only the one shot on target, didn't offer a huge amount and now sit just two points from danger. We've got five games to go, no one's safe. Huddersfield 1, Millwall nil. Leeds haven't felt this feeling for a while. Charlie Slater. No, they've not. Leeds have lost for the first time in 2024. Coventry 2, Leeds 1, a case of opportunity missed for Leeds, who could have gone top but now find themselves third. Coventry's goals from Ellis Sims and Hadji Wright before Joel Pirou gave Leeds a lifeline with 15 minutes remaining. Coventry closed the gap to the playoffs to just four points. Coventry 2, Leeds 1. Given everything that's going on at the bottom, could be a valuable point for Stoke this afternoon. Lee Blakeman. What a game. Stoke 2, West Brom 2, West Brom 2 up. Johnston in the first half, Ben Wallace 
in the second. Stoke got one back through Manhurf before Vidigal equalised. Penalty was saved, scored the rebound. Stoke 2, West Brom 2. League One leaders have won, Flo. Full-time, Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1. That win puts Pompey eight points clear at the top of League One. An own goal and a Colby Bishop brace enough to get the three points. It's not mathematically secure, but surely Portsmouth are heading back to the championship. Full-time, Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1. Let's go to Colchester, Wrexham next, where the visitors turned it round. Paul Scott. Yes, Wrexham come from behind. Colchester 1, Wrexham 2. Wrexham keeping the pressure on the league leaders. It was the home side that took the lead in the second half through John Akinde's first league goal in a year. Paul Mullins' 100th Wrexham goal levelled matters before defender Max Kluwerth's header secured the win. Colchester stay in the drop zone. It's finished Colchester 1, Wrexham 2. Motherwell, Kilmarnock and Hearts have all won in the Scottish Premiership. Livingston Aberdeen still playing that's goal. I said Johnston have won as well, Ailey and it's a huge three points for them to move four points clear of the relegation playoff place. Adama Sidibe scampering clear to slot in the opener. Hibs were level seven minutes later. Chris Cadden smashing in after my leader's effort was well saved and the St Johnson goalkeeper pulled off a string of incredible saves before the Saints were gifted the corner that led to the winner. Tony Gallagher hooking it in to secure all three points. Hibs's top six hopes, they're hanging by a thread a little bit. Uh, the crowd making it clear their thoughts on the performance. They remain in seventh with one one game to play before the league splits, but a massive three points for the Saints. It finished. Hibernian once and Johnson two. Full time whistle has gone and Molly New Wolves are absolutely fuming. Maz. Yeah, they're furious because of that Max Kilman header that they thought was the equaliser to make it 2 2 in the hundred and uh, in the 99th minute rather has uh, being ruled out. And uh, some of the support staff of Gary O'Neill are getting yellow carded now as well by Tony Harrington on the pitch here at full time, protesting still what they thought was a, a, a valid goal ruled out so it has finished Wolves 1 West Ham 2 that direct from a corner goal from James Ward-Prowse uh, in the 85th minute turning out to be the winner Wolves turning this around they've won here uh, West Ham rather turning this one around they've won here at Molyneux 2-1 Newcastle needed this Henry Moran they did full time Fulham nil. Newcastle won Fulham on top for much of the afternoon but Newcastle get just a fourth away win on the road this season the goal when it came Bruno Guimaraes with 10 minutes left blasting home when the ball dropped to him on the edge of the box those Newcastle supporters Delighted, and why wouldn't they be? Fulham nil, Newcastle one. Lee two leaders Stockport have won three one at Sutton Hall FC. Of course, they did another bucket load in Super League. Richard Stead. Yeah, and amongst all the football drama, it's me that's seen Pele score one of Hull's consolation tries, totally outclassed by the Huddersfield Giants. Adam Swift with a hat trick, Tui Lola Heo with a brace, 56 points to 22. Huddersfield Giants beat Hull FC. Details of Stockport's win from Ellen Ellard. Yeah, Stockport stay four points clear at the top of the table with a 3 1 win over Sutton, who, despite being in good form before today, are back in the drop zone. Paddy Madden scored twice within the first half hour. Lakin got one back from the spot for Sutton before the Stockport captain completed his hat trick before the break and despite attacking changes at half time is finished here Stockport uh, Stockport 3 Sutton 1 Good afternoon I'm Mark Chapman you're listening to BBC Radio 5 live at just after 5 o'clock and this is Sports Report <laughs> The headlines this Saturday evening. Manchester City win at Crystal Palace. Off to De Bruyne, brilliant finish. Super goal. This one a really good team goal. And that's 100 for the club for him. Kevin De Bruyne gets two as they beat Crystal Palace 4-2. Arsenal will go to the top of the table if they beat Brighton at 5.30. Conor McNamara. Mikel Arteta rested several of his big names on Wednesday, but they come back in for this one. Arsenal desperately need a win, but Brighton haven't lost at home in the league since August. An 89th-minute goal for Carlton Morris gives Luton a 2-1 win over Bournemouth. Everton move away from the relegation zone with a 1-0 win over 10-man Burnley. It finishes Villa 3, Brentford 3 and a thriller at Villa Park. West Ham beat Wolves 2-1 after the home side at Molyneux had a 99th-minute equaliser ruled out by VAR. 
Grenade Guimaraes gets the only goal of the game as Newcastle see off Fulham. Leicester go top of the championship after a 2-1 win over Birmingham. That's after both Ipswich and Leeds lose. At the bottom, Huddersfield are out of the relegation zone with a late 1-0 win over Millwall. Sheffield Wednesday also get three points. Portsmouth have extended their lead at the top of League One with a 3-1 win over Shrewsbury. Carlisle are relegated after a 2-0 defeat at Northampton. In League Two, there were wins for Stockport, Wrexham and MK Dons. Exeter have beaten Bath 21-15 in Rugby Union's Champions Cup. Sam North East has hit the highest individual first-class innings at Lords, finishing 335 not out for Glamorgan. And Max Verstappen leads a Red Bull front row for tomorrow's Japanese Grand Prix. Reaction to as many of those stories to come before kick-off at the Amex, and I'll give you uh, every result from the day's football in the next half hour as well. Let's start with the Premier League, and at lunchtime, it finished Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4. And then at 3 o'clock, Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3. Everton 1, Burnley 0. Burnley reduced to 10 in that game midway through the second half. Fulham 0, Newcastle 1. Luton 2, Bournemouth 1. And Wolves 1, West Ham 2. So Manchester City are level on points with Liverpool at the top of the table after a 4-2 win over Crystal Palace. They're behind them on goal difference. Kevin De Bruyne got two of the goals and an assist. Pep Guardiola was full of praise for him. Today, Kevin. You know, Kevin won the game. So with uh, his first goal and the assist, the other one, the third, that's it, the third, the goal in the fourth. So, And the team were in the game and, yeah, difficult place to come. Always have been here and at the end we did it. His second goal was actually clever because he had to he had to readjust his, his his run into the box. He readjusted his step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, for many years for Man City is one of the best players in history in our club. So what have done in England is unbelievable in terms of goals, assists, and consistency. And now we need him at the end of the season. He's he's got Paris. Um, um, unbelievable statistics. Hundred goals, but it's two hundred and sixty-seven goal involvements, yeah, either assists, in three hundred and seventy-two games. Yeah, incredible. It's unbelievable. I think I think he likes to score goals, but I don't know if he enjoys it more to make an assist. So it's so generous in that. So, but he has to continue. So now we go to a real, real tough place to go, and then yeah, we see what happens. When he talks about the tough place to go, that's uh, Real Madrid. Full commentary of that during the week here on Five Live. Dion Dublin, watch this game uh, as part of the match of the day team uh, for tonight at half ten. I mean, he was individually brilliant, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how he does it, but he just seems to, you know, choose the pace of the game, picks the passes that are always right, and his goals were outstanding. I mean, um, we had JP there speaking to him. Um, Pep Guardiola about him changing his feet for his second goal and so difficult to do but he makes it look so easy Chappers he's he's a one-off he's a one-off well actually he also had to change his body shape for the for the cutback for Harland as yeah. well didn't he yeah 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 but he's he's um uh, you know, I don't know I, uh, players just don't know where he's going to be and what he's going to do and what kind of pass he's going to you know um come up with because he, he always plays it for his teammates like in front of them or, or ready to strike or you know, as footballers say, there's always a message on the ball. There's a there's a story on the ball which says, strike it first time or take two touches, give me time to get into another position. But his intelligence in the game itself is, is second to none. Substitution at half-time made a big difference for City, didn't it? Which you, you, you might not think, really, when you first hear it. But Gvardiol coming off and Akanji coming on yeah. changed everything City did down their left. Yeah, it was just a little bit more solid. Akanji was this big sort of um, imposing presence and it sort of nullified everything Palace were trying to do down that side. And uh, he likes the physical battles and, 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 he, and he stands up strong. And when Palace hit a brick wall down that side, they, they had to try something different and they had nothing else. Um, Akanji's been great for City all season uh, when he's had to come off the bench or he started. So, I mean, Pep Guardiola's looking over his shoulder and he's, he's, he's picking who he wants. Bernardo Silva comes on at 90 minutes as mm. well and, and Kovacic comes on as well. So he's, when you look over your shoulder as a manager and you've got 
as good as what you've got on the pitch already, you know, the other teams are in danger. Don't take this personally, but I've got to get a lot in between now and half five, so thanks. Bye. Listen, 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 I miss you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, right, Arsenal could go top then this evening. They're at Brighton. Conor McNamara. Yes, this has the feel of a big game about it with Manchester City winning earlier on today with uh, Liverpool facing under pressure Manchester United uh, tomorrow. So Mikel Arteta takes his team here knowing three points will return Arsenal for now to the top of the table in that comfortable home win against Luton on Wednesday. He made, you know, at the time it certainly felt, and even in hindsight, quite brave decisions leaving out so many of his big names, but the likes of Saka and Gabriel Jesus and Declan Rice and Jorginho, they all come back into the team tonight against a Brighton side who has still got a chance of European football and will want to put on a show in front of their supporters here. This won't be easy for Arsenal, we know that. Brighton, who love to hog possession, I think this is going to be a really exciting game. Uh, thank you very much, Connor. Full commentary then from half past five here on Five Live. Two big results, uh, that, well, three big results at the bottom, really. Uh, Villa 3, Brentford 3, Everton beating 10 man Burnley 1 0. Details of both of those to come, but we'll start at Kenilworth Road, where Luton came from a goal down to beat Bournemouth 2 1. I think we can still hear whoops of joy <laughs> from somewhere near you, Chris Coles. Yeah, the scenes at the end, remarkable, akin really to a cup win or a promotion. Given the enormity of this win, you can completely understand why. They just don't know when they're beaten, do they, Luton? And Rob Edwards at the end almost floated around a lap of honour to G up the crowd. And you can understand why. An injury-ravaged squad, 10 games without a win, and then your captain crops up with a last-minute winner, having been 1-0 down, to end that winless run, to breathe new life into your relegation battle. You can completely understand the emotion. Marcus Tavernier had put Bournemouth ahead with a fine finish into the corner. Jordan Clark equalised for Luton before Morris prodded home across at the back post. Jubilation at Kenilworth Road. It's only three points, Mark. It just feels much more than that given what it could mean for the run-in now. And whatever happens from here on in, this fighting spirit that Luton possess will live long in the memory. Luton 2, Bournemouth 1. Jubilation there then. Jubilation at Goodison, Ian? Well, it wasn't pretty. I would say relief is the, uh, the, the, the best word to describe it, Mark. It was uh, a precious win for Everton. It finally ended their worst run of form for 67 years with a, a first league victory since mid-December, which was ironically also against Burnley. But Burnley were architects of their own downfall. Uh, Murich dawdled with an attempted clearance on the stroke of half-time, charged down by Calvert-Lewin, looped into the back of the net, a slice of good fortune to end a, an awful first half of football. And then O'Shea was sent off midway through the second half for a late challenge on McNeil but the 10 men kept plugging away without seriously testing Pickford. Everton moved to 29 points but early next week they will receive news of another potential points deduction which is why today and this win was so crucial. Uh, so if they're happy and Luton are happy I don't know what the emotions are at Villa Park really. Villa were two up then three two down then three all Pat Murphy. A milestone I reckon. <laughs> Brentford gimlet eyed pragmatic they're never going to win any popularity contest when playing away but you can't fault their spirit or resilience they were deservedly 2-0 down on the hour due to a scruffy goal from Watkins and a virtuoso effort from Rogers. but over the next nine minutes Villa's defence went to sleep and Zanka Mbwemo and Wisa plundered three on swift counter-attacks all this with a half-fit Tony still on the bench he didn't get on till Watkins equalised with a towering header and although insistent Villa pressure in front of the whole end nearly brought the winner. A late booking for the influential Louise means a two-match ban. How important will that be for Villa in the running? I know what the emotion is at Molyneux. Fury, Maz Faruqi. Yeah, Gary O'Neill playing peacemaker, Mark, at the end of this match here on the pitch, dragging some of his support staff away from the referee, Tony Harrington, some of them yellow-carded because of the anger of that late Kilman header in stoppage time that looked like it had stolen a point for Wolves being ruled out after a very lengthy look at the pitch side monitor from the referee. The second half, from a West Ham point of view, though, that can certainly give them some momentum heading into Thursday's Europa League quarter-final against all-conquering Bayer, Leverkusen, James Ward, Prowse's corner from the left went past everyone, including Jose Sartre in the Wolves goal, and swerved in under the crossbar in the 85th minute for what turned out to be the winner. Wolves were the better side in the first half as well. Eight Nori winning a deserved penalty, which was converted by Pablo Zarabia. But West Ham did improve after the break. The equaliser for them was again a penalty scored by Pakitar, awarded after a Kilman handball in the area. But heading into Thursday's match as well for West Ham, that lower back or left hit injury for Jared Bowen is certainly a concern for David Moyes. But the second 45 something for them to 
build on after some patchy form, but all the controversy, all the talking points still will be whether or not that Wolves header late on should have should have been a goal and should have counted to give them a draw because here at full time it finished West Ham 2 Wolves 1 One uh, final game to squeeze in from the Premier League Fulham nil, Newcastle 1 Henry Moran Yeah Newcastle's away form has been so poor this season just three wins on the road no clean sheet in 11 that today's win was arguably somewhat fortuitous Fulham could have and should have scored on numerous occasions in the first half won't bother the travelling to an army one jot Fabian Scher thought that he'd scored on 75 minutes before a VA our intervention just five minutes later and it felt like Newcastle rather stung into action. Bruno Guimaraes slamming home from the edge of the box for the game's decisive moment. Fulham remains 13th, they'll think they should have won this in truth they possibly should but Newcastle missing oh so many players will travel north with a win to keep them a point behind West Ham in 7th. Back to Goodison, Sean Dyche live on Sports Report with Rob Schofield. Thank you Mark Sean it always felt like such a, a big day and all about the result, you must be delighted now that it's all over and you've got the three points yeah absolutely you know i've spoken this season about us changing the the, the storyline um, we've done that today because it was building it has been for a while now um some of it fairly so a lot of it not fairly so you know i think we played very well in other games and dominated here and haven't won um, we spoke to the players about finding a win and finding an ugly win and we've done that today um, by design and i'm pleased with that side of things could have been made easier, I think. I mean, we, we can't get big decisions at the moment. I mean, the second player should get sent off for me when Beto goes through. We should get another penalty, very almost identical to Dominic Calvert-Lewin's last weekend at Bournemouth, which everyone, well, virtually 99% of the world agreed should be a penalty. Wasn't given. We get another one with Jimmy Garner today. That would have made things a lot more comfortable. As it happens, we've got to grind it out, and we did so today, and I'm pleased for the players for that. Jared Branthwaite's just told us, in terms of strikers and Dominic Cavalier, when, when confidence is high, sometimes things actually go your way. Is that kind of how you see it with Dom? Has maybe the noise been uh, over-exaggerated potentially for him and, and a lovely slice of luck for him today? Well, as a manager, you know, we don't want to cry things in. I, I try not to, but I don't think it's fair to say we've had um, them elements of fortune over this run. Um, at some point, you do wonder, is it ever going to pay you back? It did today, but it's good closing down as well. Don't forget a mistake from the key, but good closing down. And, you know, you get your rewards for the closing down. Um, we've had enough chances today to win the game, but, you know, we, we didn't always take them, and that's been a story of the season. We've got to correct that. But equally correcting the, 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 the recent run of games, it was a very, very important. We knew that today, and we've done that. Sean Dyche live with Rob Schofield on Sports Report. Liverpool 70 from 30 and Manchester City 70 from 31. Arsenal 68 from 30, Villa 60 from 32, Tottenham 57 from 30, so two games in hand to go past Villa in fourth, Manchester United 48 from 30 and West Ham 48 from 32, Newcastle 47 from 31, Brighton have played 30 and have 43, Chelsea also have 43 but they've played 29, Wolves 42 from 31, Bournemouth 41 from 31, then Fulham have played 32 and have 39, Palace 30 from 31, Everton 29 from 31, Brentford 29 from 32, Forest have 25 from 31, Luton 25 from 32, and then Burnley 19 from 32, and Sheffield United 15 from 30. In the Championship today, Norwich won Ipswich nil at lunchtime, Blackburn nil, Southampton nil, Cardiff won Hull three, Coventry two, Leeds one, Huddersfield won Millwall nil, Leicester 2, Birmingham 1, Middlesbrough 2, Swansea 0, QPR 0, Sheffield Wednesday 2, 2 all between Stoke and West Brom, and goalless between Sunderland and Bristol City and Watford and Preston. So because Leeds and Ipswich both lost, Leicester have gone back to the top of the table with that win over Birmingham. Birmingham in the bottom three, Aaron Paul. Yeah, cathartic is the way I'd describe full-time here, Mark. This was a real message from Leicester, who are not at their best for large parts, but goals change games, and Steffi Mavadidi stooping header at the back post changed the atmosphere here. Frustration was the word to describe the second half. John Ruddy rolling back the ears to pull off save after save. Jamie Vardy not as sharp as some Fatawa and Didi were much maligned following wasteful performances, but you felt it was coming, and then cue the celebrations. You really saw players and fans together at the end. High fives all round from Enzo Moresca. Like a wounded boxer, his side slugged their way to victory with the Premier League very much on the horizon. Birmingham back in the bottom three. They were brave. They looked handy on the counter. But the points in the afternoon belong to Leicester. And they have 88 from 40. Ipswich 87 from 41 and Leeds 86 from 41. Uh, then Southampton 75 from 39. West Brom 69 from 41 and Norwich 67 from 41, Coventry with 63 from 40, Middlesbrough 
uh, 61 from 41, and Hull 61 from 40 will not think that they are out of it at the moment. Rotherham relegated last night after defeat at Plymouth. They have 23. Everybody uh, that I'm mentioning here has all played the same number of games. Sheffield Wednesday, 42. Birmingham, 42. Huddersfield, 43. Millwall and Plymouth, 44. And then Stoke, QPR and Blackburn, all have 46. So that was a big win for Huddersfield over Millwall, Katie Smith. Yeah, and the boss, Andre Brighton writer, urged fans before the game to forget the past, to forget the fact that in recent memory, it just feels like they're always left in this scrapping position at the end of the season. Just give the players everything, he said. And it did feel scrappy against the Millwall side, only four points above them at the start of the afternoon. But Huddersfield had the more threatening chances throughout. Josh Caroma could have had a hat-trick on another day, but with 94 minutes on the clock, Reese Healy headed in to move them one point clear and give them a first home win since Valentine's Day. Millwall, though, that's two losses in a row now against teams below them. And more significantly, they're now just two points clear of danger, as you said, with league leaders Leicester up next on Tuesday. Blackpool won Cambridge nil as we go into League One. That's their first goal and win in four for Blackpool. Bristol Rovers nil, Bolton two. Burton nil, Oxford four. Charlton two, Barnsley one. Alfie May getting both. Charlton goals. He is absolutely flying this season. 27 for the season. Exeter beat Stevenage 1 0. Leighton Orient 3, Cheltenham 1. Northampton 2, Carlisle 0. Portsmouth, the leaders 3, Shrewsbury 1. Reading 1, Lincoln 1. Wigan 0, Port Vale 0. So Portsmouth, the leaders, eight points clear with four to play for the top three. They have 90. Derby have 82. And Bolton have 81. Peterborough have six left to play, they have 74. Barnsley, five to play, they have 74. Oxford, four to play, they have 70. Lincoln, also four to play, just outside the playoffs on 68. Carlisle are down, they have 27. Fleetwood have 34. Cheltenham, 38. Burton and Port Vale have 40. There's then a gap to Cambridge on 45, so it's looking like four from five out of, well, Carlisle are down, but Fleetwood, Cheltenham, Burton and Port Vale, so three of those four you would expect to join Carlisle, who went down to League Two today with defeat at Northampton, watched by Mark Webber. Where it finished Northampton Town 2, Carlisle United nil at the home of the National Lift Tower. Carlisle United are confirmed as the basement club and relegated after one season of League One football. Northampton came up with Carlisle last season, but today's game was an example of their diverging paths this season. Carlisle struggling to take advantage of early possession, only Georgie Kelly testing keeper Lee Burge in the first half. Luke Armstrong headed into the keeper's hands 20 minutes later. Sandwiching between that, a familiar cobbler's combo, a Mitch Pinnock corner and Kieran Bowen a rebound scored for Northampton first but when this sub Ali Koike run the length of the pitch to score in injury time you knew it was over for Carlisle now Carlisle have new owners and they're determined to rebuild the Citadel City that job begins today as Carlisle United are relegated Northampton Town 2 Carlisle United 0 in League 2 Accrington 0 Crew 0 AFC Wimbledon beat 9 man Salford 1-0 Barrow were beaten 2-0 at home by Swindon Bradford beat Gillingham 1-0 Wrexham won 2 1 at Colchester. Forest Green Rovers nil, MK Dons 2. Grimsby won Newport nil. Mansfield have now just won, of, have now just won one of their last five, beaten 4 1 at home by Crawley, and it drops them out of the automatic promotion spots as well. Morecambe nil, Doncaster 3. Notts County beat Harrogate by three goals nil. That's their first win at home this year. Sutton won Stockport 3, and Tranmere won Walsall 3. So Stockport have 80 from 41. Wrexham 76 from 42, MK Don 74 from 43, then Mansfield 73 from 41, Barrow 67 from 41, Crew 67 from 42, and <coughs> excuse me, and Crawley have the final playoff spot 65 from 41. Uh, the bottom two stay the same. Forest Green Rovers 36 from 42, Colchester 38 from 40. Sutton outside the bottom two, but they played three games more than Colchester and have just a point more. They have 39 from 43. To tidy up all the results in England, uh, in the National League, Oldham 1, Rochdale 1, Boreham Wood 4, Wealdstone 0, Dorking 0, 10 man Altrincham 0, Ebbsfleet 2, 10 man Fylde 1, Hartlepool 2, Aldershot 0, Maidenhead 2, Barnet 2, Woking 3, Dagenham and Redbridge 2, 9 man York nil, Eastley one. So you have Chesterfield already promoted uh, the playoff spots at the moment. Barnet, Bromley, Altrincham, Solihull, Solihull Moors, Gateshead and Aldershot. The bottom four in the National League. Oxford City who are already down. Dorking, Kidderminster 
and Boreham Wood. In the FA Trophy semi-finals, Bromley won Solihull Moors 2 and Gateshead 2, Macclesfield 1 is how it finished. Go through the results in Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales shortly. Let's go into uh, Rugby Union's Champions Cup where there have already been wins for Bulls, 59-19 over Lyon. Exeter, who beat Bath 21-15, and La Rochelle, who came from 13-0 down at half-time to win 22-21 against Stormers. James Burridge is getting ready for Bordeaux Saracens. And there are big questions about the state of Saracens, Mark. The three times champions who have produced some memorable performances down the years, but are they the force they used to be? They were thumped by Bordeaux in January, conceding nine tries last week at Northampton. Well beaten again. If they are to put it off, they'll have to do it without Owen Farrell, out injured with a hamstring strain. Alex Good deputises an experienced campaigner, so no bad replacement. As for Bordeaux, they're missing their star 10 2 and Mathieu Jalabert but have so much class in their back line and a home crowd behind them. Exeter and Harlequins already through to the last eight. Can Saris join them? We kick off shortly on Extra. Uh, big game in Scotland is obviously tomorrow. Rangers against Celtic. Full commentary here on Five Live from noon. Elsewhere today, Dundee 2, Motherwell 3. Hibs 1, St Johnston 2. Puts them four ahead of Ross County. Does that send, uh, send does that for St Johnston, who are 10th, and Ross County are 11th because Kilmarnock beat Ross County 1 0. Livingston and Aberdeen finished goalless, finished St Mirren 1, Hearts 2. In the Scottish Championship today, Adrianians 3, Morton 1, Dunfermline 1, Partick 1, Inverness 2, Arbroath 1, Queen's Park 0, Dundee United 5. Uh, and Wraith beat Air by two goals to one. It means the gap between Dundee United and Wraith is still four points at the top, but Wraith have a game in hand on the leaders. Uh, our both can now finish no higher than ninth, uh, so we'll be in at least a relegation playoff. In League One, Annan won Hamilton three. Edinburgh City against Montrose was abandoned. Queen of the South won Kelty Hearts two. Stirling won uh, Alloa five. Uh, in Scottish League Two, Bonnie Rig Rose two. Peterhead 2, Clyde 1, Stranra 0, Elgin 2, Spartans 2, Forfar 0, Dumbarton 2 and Stenhouse Muir 0, East 5 0 and that point for Stenhouse Muir and the point for Peterhead means that Stenhouse Muir have been promoted to Scottish League 1 next season. In Wales today, in the Championship group in the Welsh Premier, Cardiff Metropolitan 0, Connors Key 3. In the relegation group, Colwyn Bay 1, Pontypridd 0. And they're 12 minutes in at Aberystwyth, and that is goalless between themselves and Penny Bond. Uh, back to the Premier League, let's get some reaction from Luton's 2-1 win at home to Bournemouth. Jordan Clark got there first. We knew after the, uh, the two defeats against Tottenham and Arsenal, obviously this was the main game. Uh, obviously every game's important, don't get me wrong, but we knew this was the start of our mini-season, you know, coming towards the end. Um, and we just put everything out there and we knew all week how, how important it was and uh, just a huge relief to get three points, yeah. What was key to it in the end? Because it was a fairly lacklustre first half from both sides, really. Yeah, I think it was a bit, it felt like a bit of a testimony at first half, but I think in our point of view it was a bit of nerves, obviously. There's a lot of adrenaline th running through your veins and that's when you uh, can make the mistakes, you know, but... Obviously, to, to have the setback and then to come back and win it in the second half. I thought it was really good second half. I thought we played in their half, which we spoke about at half time, penning them in, keeping the pressure on putting balls in the box and getting shots off. And uh, yeah, just uh, lovely to see it come off, you know what I mean? In Northern Ireland, say in the relegation half of the Northern Irish Premiership, Dungannon 3, Carrick Rangers 2, Glenarvan 3, Newry City 2, and Loch Gall 2, Ballymena 3. In the Championship group, surprise defeat for the leaders, Larne, 1 0 at home to Crusaders, Coleraine 2, Cliftonville 2, Glen Torrent against Linfield is a half five kickoff. In the F1, Max Verstappen is on pole. It's an all Red Bull front row for the Japanese Grand Prix. You can hear that in full on Five Live and the BBC Sport website from six o'clock tomorrow. And a historic day in the county championship, only day two of the season. And Sam Northeast has hit the highest ever individual first class score at Lords. 335 not out he made for Glamorgan against Middlesex. And then they declared, and that beat Graham Gucher's famous 333 against India there. 
back in 1990. So Liverpool play at Manchester United tomorrow. Full commentary of that here on Five Live. Manchester City won at lunchtime against Crystal Palace. Arsenal could go top in the next couple of hours with a win at Brighton. Let's head to the Amex and join Danny Gabidon and Conor McNamara. Thanks very much, Mark. The teams are out. Brighton, who were disappointed not to take more from their draw with Brentford in midweek. Brighton only allowed their opponents have five shots in that game. Brighton had 24 themselves. They will hope if the chances come today that they can take them. And Roberto De Zerbi's team won't expect to get 24 shots of goal against this Arsenal defence all season long. Brighton do so well in terms of possession stats. They hold the ball. Will they be able to hold it against title chasing Arsenal here? Arsenal in their change strip, sort of luminous yellowy green. Gabriel Jesus high kicking like a can can girl in front of us, stretching out his hamstrings, poised to go ahead of kickoff. Brighton in the blue and white stripes. The players take a knee ahead of kickoff. This is one of the Premier League's designated weekends for that. A timely reminder that there was no place for racism or indeed any other type of discrimination in football. We are underway. Gabriel Jesus who had jumped the gun there and actually run into the Brighton half before the ball was kicked, but referee John Brooks decided not to be too pedantic. And Arsenal attacking the end away to our left-hand side, immediately win a free kick, Van Hecke into the back of Kai Havertz. Danny Gabbard on alongside me. We'll be looking forward to this one, Danny. I certainly am, Connor. You know, can Arsenal respond to that earlier Man City result? Can they put pressure on Liverpool, who of course play tomorrow? Difficult game against Manchester United. It was about this time last season when Arsenal kind of fell apart, didn't they? Really went off the rails. Have they learned from previous mistakes? Certainly starting to look that way, but it's going to be a difficult game for them. Brighton, in decent form, particularly at home this season. And we know what they're capable of doing. Brilliant football that they play, so going to be an intriguing game, this one. Free kick to Arsenal, Martin Odegaard to take it on the edge of the penalty area. Full start, and he goes back to reset again, and then he clips it in. Looks to be too close to the goalkeeper, but with the flashing header, Gabriel got there first and puts his header wide. Exactly a minute played at the Amex, and Arsenal with a glorious chance to take the lead. Gabriel, who's been... Such a high-scoring defender this season, should have scored. Yeah, and it's two or three Arsenal players who look offside, don't quite get themselves back in the line, but Gabriel does, and he should score. It's as simple as that. Teasing delivery from Odegaard for Bergen, just slightly unsure whether to come or not. Raya with a miscued clearance down the other end. Saliba's going to try and head it clear on the edge of the penalty area. Brighton do get possession. So Arsenal with a big goal-scoring opportunity with a minute played, but they weren't able to take it. This remains Brighton and Hove Albion nil, Arsenal nil. Van Hecke has possession, 10 yards into his own half, and under pressure from Kai Havertz, he rolls it back to Vart Verbrun, the Dutch goalkeeper wearing all orange, suitably for a Dutchman. There's uh, a chance for Tarek Lanty, who scored against Arsenal in the League Cup last season to bring the ball over the halfway line. Number two on his back, he'll roll it into the midfield to Carlos Baleba, the Cameroon. International, who's done well in the centre of the park for Brighton lately. And now Lewis Dunk, the captain, who scored the last time Brighton beat Arsenal. That was back in the behind-closed-door summer of 2020. Brighton still in position with Dunk. Over the halfway line, they come to the Polish international, Jakub Moder, who celebrates his birthday tomorrow. Pascal Gross, who's already into double figures for assists this season in the Premier League. And then an attempt to cross in from the left-hand side from Julio Enciso. He's closed down, and the ball goes out for a corner kick. First quarter of the game is for Brighton. Nil-nil of the Amex and 5 Yeah, line. really good response from Brighton. Gabriel really should score that header. Free header, he's probably six yards out. And he misses the goal completely. You'd be really disappointed, but Brighton, the first kind of passage of possession, forcing a corner down the other end. Pascal Gross is going to take the corner. All of his Brighton teammates hanging at the far post from where this is going to come. Left-hand side as Brighton come forward. In-swinger for Pascal Gross. Gabriel wins the header in front of Raya. And then it's going to sit up. Well, it didn't quite sit up for Adingra. No room for him to shoot. And the referee then stops play because there is an Arsenal player, Jorginho, down on the edge of his own six-yard box. It is a head injury, and that's why the referee has stopped play. Jorginho presumably challenging for the ball as the corner came in. And he didn't get back to his feet. And even though 
Brighton had it on the edge of the penalty area. And the referees are compelled to hold up play. Yeah, the referee has no choice. There are a lot of bodies in that kind of near post area where the ball was kind of whipped into. He just gets bundled over. Jorginho stays down. So another choice for John Brooks, but to, just to blow the whistle there, just looking at that Gabriel chance again. What a chance it is. Unmarked. That near post there, he's just got to hit the target. It's a goal because the goalkeeper of Verbruggen is not sure whether to come, then he kind of stops. He should do better, Gabriel, he knows it. That was the, the beauty of de the delivery from Odegaard. It felt, we, we were directly behind him, the, 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 the trajectory of the ball. It felt like it was going straight to the goalkeeper, but that allowed Gabriel to sprint in ahead of him, and he did get there cleanly in front of the Dutch goalkeeper, but he couldn't plant the header into the back of the net. Jorginho is back up on his feet. He has had treatment, so he will need to leave the field in order to come back on again. Arsenal fans who are housed behind the goal that their team defended in this first half, and they are there in big numbers. Various Arsenal shirts from various phases down through the years. One or two even in there from the invincible season. 20 years since Arsenal were last champions of England. It feels at the moment they have never been better equipped to get back to that top stage but they've got these eight finals to go now between now and the end of next month players back underway Jorginho's waiting to be allowed back on Arsenal temporarily with 10 Dunk has it near the centre circle Brighton playing from left to right as we look down and then Van Hecke plays a cross field ball up towards Julio and Ciso warm applause for the Brighton fans for that he tries to cross it back in takes a deflection jumping near the penalty spot was Declan Rice acrobatic leak by Baleva to win possession but the referee felt he was too forceful in his jump into the opponent there. It is a free kick to Arsenal, and suffice to say, that hasn't gone down well with the Brighton fans. Jorginho's back on Arsenal, back to 11, and it's nil-nil here on five line. And you feel those wide areas are going to be really important for both teams this evening. Adinga and Ciso playing off the left-hand side this evening. And obviously Saka back in the start in 11. On the right-hand side, and Jesus on the left, so... Could be really important battles in those wide areas with the full-backs. And Heck just looking to switch the ball quickly from right to left to get and see the win of 1v1 situation against Ben White. Mild temperatures in this part of Sussex. No blue in the sky ahead, though. It's a great cloud over the Amex Stadium. This pitch illuminated by the bright floodlights and reflecting off these fluorescent Arsenal shirts as Zinchenko comes forward down the left-hand side. Rolls it back to... Gabriel on the halfway line in field again to William Saliba. Saliba's the only Arsenal player who's played in every minute in the Premier League this campaign. Odegaard drops deep, gives a pass to Gabriel and then he's short to Saliba and then Brighton nip in and a chance for Adingra to take it. Good recovery by Gabriel. Arsenal regain possession. Now Brighton are streaming for a free kick there. I think of the referee's credit, John Brooks had clearly allowed play to continue at the time. Brighton were happy but then they lost it immediately. Nothing the referee can do about that. Really, but I think the Brian fans just wanted the ref to still pull the, yeah. the game back after he got tackled. Pervis Stupinian delivers from the left hand side. It's all covered by Alexander Zinchenko, who cushions a header back to the goalkeeper, David Raya. On the Arsenal bench today, Aaron Ramsey. Who I, I always wonder, particularly when he comes, comes up against Brighton, more than any other team, he will think back to Mikel Arteta's comments at the start of the season when he said, I'm bringing in David Raya, but he's not going to be the number one. I'm going to rotate my goalkeepers. Well, before today, for Bruin and Jason Steele, of the 30 Premier League games Brighton have played, they had started 15 each. Now, that is rotating your goalkeeper, and really, Ramsdale's only played against Brentford. Yeah, that was a complete lie in the end <laughs> from <laughs> Mikel Arteta. I feel sorry for Aaron Ramsey. I don't think he's done too much wrong, but manager... I think he's wanted Rea for a long time. Obviously, feels he's better with his feet and improve the team. And I do feel sorry for him, particularly with him coming out saying those comments about rotation because that hasn't happened. And credit to Arteta and his decision making. Arsenal's defence has been fantastic this season. More clean sheets in the Premier League than any other team. That's a lovely one, too. Lamptey with Motor to bring it up to the halfway line. Now. Simon Adringa will come forward. Lamptey, who's got loads of pace into the penalty area, pulls it back for Inciso, who balloons his shot over the top. Ben White was sliding in on him. I don't know if that forced a change of stance from Inciso, but he scored a, a brilliant goal here towards the back end of last season against Manchester City, and he's completely failed to hit the target there. Yeah, brilliant football from Brighton. Worked the ball well down his right-hand side. Lamptey, I just thought he could have kept going, actually. 
drove into the 18-yard bo yard box a little bit more, but he, he elects to square it across the 18-yard box, so he's just under a little bit of pressure, which makes the strike difficult to get on target. The pressure from Baleba closing in on Gabriel and pinning Arsenal back. The ball goes out for a throw in left fullback position for the home team. This is Five Live and BBC Sounds, the Premier League on the BBC. This 5.30 kickoff. Arsenal hoping to go back to the top of the Premier League. Manchester City won earlier on today. Liverpool travel to Old Trafford tomorrow. And this wafer thin title race, the best we've had in years and years and years. And it looks like it's going to continue right to the wire. Gabriel has possession, 10 yards inside his own half. Rolls it to his right to William Saliba. Pressure from Moder who comes forward. Odegaard has dropped deep in amongst the defenders and he plays a poor pass that is intercepted by Pascal Gross and Brighton get it back. And you know that early scare with the Gabriel header he should have scored. Otherwise, it's really been all Brighton in these opening. What have we played now? 10 minutes. Shot from distance from Moder and he's dragged it away and wide of the target. Well, you have to say the home team have responded well to that early Gabriel chance and they're starting to get those patterns of play now with their possession game. Ball just played into well back there in the central area, lays it off to Moden. He's got a lot of time and space to size the strike up, and he just drags his shot wide. But it's just interesting because you saw what Arsenal did when it went to the Etihad, and they played slightly different. They dropped a little bit deeper, tried to stay compact, obviously did a good job there, got a point, but certainly reverting more back to type this evening where they're looking to press Brighton high. But Brighton actually enjoy that. They want teams to kind of come on to you so they can try and play through you. and. They've had two or three moments of joy with that already, Brighton. Brighton, who've got the best run of unbeaten home form in the Premier League. Uh, they lost in Europe in September. They haven't lost in the top flight since West Ham came here, and that was all the way back in August. Tarek Lamptey has possession on the right-hand side. Uh, Welbeck's the only target up top, and Saliba judged that well, actually. Welbeck tried to nip in ahead of him. Saliba trusted that it would come through to him. And Jorginho now has possession for Arsenal near the centre circle. He'll pass it out to Martin Odegaard. Right wing location. Brighton quick to get bodies back behind the ball. And Saka gives the ball away. Brighton win it cheaply again in the midfield. Bit of good start from Roberto De Zerbi's side. Rice gets it back for the visitors. Saliba near the centre circle. He needs the help of Gabriel and it's all the way back to the goalkeeper. Raya wearing all black on this visit to the south coast this evening. It's interesting, when Arsenal come out from the back, Welbeck, and I guess it might be his advancing years and the, the injuries he's had, but he's not the one doing the pressing. Moder and Inciso come, and they've got fresher legs and are able to put pressure on the Arsenal defenders. But now Saka is in around the back down the other end. Dunk is trying to get across. Saka goes around him, and he pulls it across the face of goal and wide. We've seen Saka do that so many times this season. Cutting back onto his left boot off the right wing and bending it into the bottom corner. He got the bend here, but not enough. It's wide, it's another let off for Brighton, nil-nil. Yeah, just waiting for the net to bulge, I really am. Cuts inside on that left foot, and he's looking to bend it in that far corner. A million miles away, but he'll be really disappointed. It's a good chance for him. Kaya Saka in possession again, stepping into the penalty area, right-hand side, pulls it back for Gabriel Jesus! Shot on target, saved by Verbruggen. What a save from the Dutchman. Finger tipping it out for a corner, diving to his left-hand side. Gabriel Jesus, who had time to steady himself and really picked his spot, but the goalkeeper, who was already covering that side, was able to dive. I mean, it's a great save, just seeing several replays here. It looks better every angle. Yeah, full stretch, dive into his left. Brian just looking to play out from that goal kick, and they give the ball away in a really poor area. A cut back across the 18-yard box to... Jesus does everything right, looking to bend it in that far corner. Brilliant save. He's only 21 for Brian. You forget that sometimes. He's a, he's a big lad, but so young, and yet he might well be the Netherlands' first choice keeper of the Euros of the summer. Here comes the in swinger, headed away by Baleba from the Arsenal corner. It comes back out to Saka on the right hand side. He's got the close support of Martin Odegaard. Odegaard gets the head down, stabs in across. Dunk is patrolling the back post and heads it away, but only as far as Gabriel Jesus. Back into the mixer. Saka tries to jump. Estupinian beats him in the air. Can't clear it out of the penalty area. Juggling skills from Gabriel Jesus as he tries to get it under his control. But and Dingra is able to clear away. Brighton feeling the heat of Arsenal pressure now. Still nil nil. Danny Gabadon. Good response from Arsenal. First time really Brighton have been. 
poor in possession and kind of giving the ball away and it's just given that incentive to Arsenal just penning Brighton in now Brighton and Hope Albion nil Arsenal nil there will be many interested listeners to this commentary from Manchester and from Liverpool to see if Arsenal might drop points here on the south coast this evening Jorginho has the ball just outside the penalty area. Gives it to the right-hand side to Saka. Excellent pressure from Inciso. And Odegaard is to nip in and just scoop the ball away from the Argentinian to hold on to possession. Inciso suddenly jumps back again. Wins it off wide. Brilliant energy from Julio Inciso. Winning the ball for Brighton. They try to launch a counter-attack. But the long ball carries all the way through to David Ryan. Yeah, excellent defensive work, Inciso. And then really good job of kind of keeping hold of the ball as well. Because he had no real options ahead of him. And he just a little Cruyff turn. The cycles possession in the end they have to play the ball long to get out here is Havertz through the middle first time he's had the ball at his feet in the penalty area Dunk stands him up Havertz crosses it to Gabriel Jesus who puts the header across the face of goal as well now that's three big chances Arsenal have had now three chances you would expect them to score and the goalkeeper hasn't had to make a save in any of them. He did save from the other one from Gabriel Jesus. But three occasions, Gabriel, Saka and Gabriel Jesus, that Arsenal have put big chances wide. Well, the pick out from Havertz is outstanding. You can see what he's trying to do, Jesus. He's just trying to nod it back across the goalkeeper where the cross has come from. Doesn't hit the target, but brilliant set of four play from Havertz. Initially, the running behind Dunk. Great composure and a great pick out for Jesus, who's making that run on the far post, should do better. Pascal Gross has it deep in the midfield for Brighton, gives it to his right-hand side to Jan-Paul Van Hecke. Van Hecke, who's making his 50th appearance for the club. Dunk, under pressure from Odegaard, turns and rolls it back to the goalkeeper for Bruhu, and who's got no choice than to slam it away, but Kai Havertz closing in on him. The clearance goes high up over the halfway line. Ben White jumps and wins the header. Falls down for Danny Welbeck, who'll turn and calmly roll it back to Lewis Dunk. And Dunk goes for a long quarterback, sort of launched ball, which picks out a dink What a pass from Lewis Dunk into the penalty area. It goes on his left boot and he slams it a couple of feet wide. That was all about power. And in the end, it just needed a bit more precision. Dangerous from Brighton, all set up by a glorious pass from Lewis Dunk. And that's what Odinga wants, that quick ball. Great ball from Lewis Dunk, left to right, straight to the feet of Odinga, and he's in that quick 1v1 situation with Zinchenko. Cuts inside, across the 18-yard box, onto his left foot, but just shanks the shot wide, never troubling Ray in the end. But that quick ball, really important for Brighton. Getting those wide players on the ball quickly, where they can kind of create those 1v1 situations. 0-0 nil -nil on five live, this is the seventh Premier League game being played today. Earlier on, victories from Manchester City in the lunchtime kickoff for Everton, for Newcastle, Luton, and West Ham all winning up and down the land in the Premier League today. Best of the action tonight. Match of the day, 10:30. Gary Lineker alongside Ian Wright and Dion Dublin. 17 minutes on the clock. Verbruggen clears it long. Well back with the flick on, and Cecil tries to get there and. Ben White beats him to it. White, who knows every blade of grass of this Amex pitch, a former Brighton player in the past. This is Saliba into Alexander Zinchenko. Zinchenko, who started against Luton on Wednesday as well. That was his 50th appearance for Arsenal. He's kept his place in the team tonight. Kivior has been playing quite regularly at left back in recent weeks. Zinchenko up towards his former Manchester City colleague, Gabriel Jesus. Loses out, does he to Baleba? Rice is in to help for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus hustles and gets it back again. Pushes the ball in front of Kai Havertz and Dunk, cool as you like, so calm, no lunge, just nips in and flicks the ball away from Kai Havertz. Lewis Dunk has had a good start to this game with 18 minutes played and still Brighton nil Arsenal nil. Just had a lot of bodies, Brighton, in that central area where they're able to kind of nullify that Arsenal attack in the end. Havertz just. Looking to skip in behind those two Brighton centre backs, but Lewis Dunk doing a really good job stepping in. Isaka wide on the right hand side for Arsenal, gives it to Odegaard. White on the overlap, and he's challenged by Estupignon, and it's inside the penalty area. But just for a moment, if Brighton were concerned about a penalty, it's actually the other way. It's a foul by White on Estupignon, 
And that will be a free kick to Brighton, and they hope to relieve some pressure here. Yeah, did a really good job of just reading the run. We know uh, Odegaard likes to get on the ball in around the 18-yard box and just play those clever passes in between full-backs and centre-backs. And Stupinion just reading the intentions of Odegaard coming across and just drawing the foul off Ben White there. Extremely busy day of live sport tomorrow on Five Live. If you're up early, 0545, you can listen to the Japanese Grand Prix. Max Verstappen looking to get back to winning ways. At noon, it's the Old Firm Derby Rangers against Celtic. And there are three Premier League games tomorrow. They're all, all of them, unusual kickoff times for a Sunday. Manchester United against Liverpool is at 3.30. You can listen to that game on Five Live. That's followed at 5.30 Sunday by Sheffield United against Chelsea. Uh, and there's also an evening game, Tottenham against Nottingham Forest tomorrow on a Sunday night as well, and CISO is on the deck. He's saying he didn't commit a foul. The referee, John Brooks, disagrees. Free kick to Arsenal, 15 yards inside Brighton territory. It is still nil-nil here. I didn't think there was too much in that. Good battle between him and Mikhail Saka in that midfield area, and he's just looking to get the other side of Saka. He lunges in with his right leg and actually wins the ball. It was pretty 50-50 for me. Arsenal have scored more headed goals this season than any other team. So many of them have come from set pieces. Odegaard is standing over this one. Havertz has made a run. This looks a rehearsed move. It's played to Kai Havertz. He's just about been tracked by a Stupignon. Clever move that by Arsenal. Haven't seen that routine before. Odegaard shoots low, deflects off the feet of a defender and out for an Arsenal corner. Just switches off. It's the opinion in that left back area. Havertz making the, the run inside of him. You have to be so, so aware when Arsenal have set pieces, so much variety to them, do a lot of work on the training ground, and Brian just able to get enough bodies back in the end to kind of see that attack out. So all hands on deck for Brighton. Everyone back inside the penalty area to defend this corner. Nil-nil of the Amex. Saka to take it for title-chasing Arsenal. He raises his right hand as a signal. Here he comes, short run up, in swinging delivery, goalkeeper stayed on his line. It was Gabriel who was closest to it, and he claims he's been pulled by a defender there. The referee, John Brooks, says no, he says that is a goal kick. And obviously VAR will look at everything in the background. Drob Jones, assisted by Simon Long, watching these images back at uh, Stockley Park this evening. Oh, there is a tug on the shirt. Pascal Gross, he gets caught the wrong side. He's marking Gabriel on that far post. Gets inside of him, and there is a tug of the shirt, but maybe not enough, gone. The, the, the experience, we're, you know, we're lucky enough to go and see so many games every season, Daddy. It, it seems to be this season, if you hold the shirt, but you let go, you always get away with it. It's, it's if you hold it and you continue that grab. If he doesn't tug his shirt, though, he's probably going to connect with the ball there. Yeah. That's why Gabriel actually misses the ball. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's one of those, it's infuriating when it's given against you, and... Mighty relieving for Brighton that nothing went wrong there. This is White, 20 yards inside his own half. Arsenal playing right to left as we look down. Brighton have sent a few subs to warm up. Saliba has possession with the white boots on the right-hand side of the Arsenal defence, and he takes no chances, turns, gives it back to Jorginho, who in turn rolls it back to the goalkeeper, David Raya. Raya with 11 Premier League clean sheets this season. Arsenal is a team of 13. But no goalkeeper is more this campaign than, than David Raya. Here comes Declan Rice trying to take them all on, and that's not a wise tactic against Brighton. He's very fortunate not to, not to have lost the ball there. He tried to go in between Adringa and Moder and Baleba, and he was very fortunate not to lose the ball. Jorginho has it on the halfway line. Nil-nil. Gabriel pops one over the top for Zinchenko to go and chase after. Brighton claiming Zinchenko's offside. Ball goes out of play anyway. I just glanced over towards the assistant to the far side, Dan Rabathan. He didn't raise his flag. So it will be a throw into Brighton, tight in by the corner flag that they defend. Right full back position and for Tariq Lamptey. Lamptey, who's only ever scored two goals for Brighton in all competitions. One of them did come against Arsenal. Uh, he's trying to get it back off Pascal Gross here. There's a hunger about Gabriel Jesus tonight. He wins the ball. Van Hecker then gets his laces through it. Clears up towards the halfway line. Saliba tries to return it. Baleba collects for Brighton. There's a lovely flick by Welbeck. Foul late on Baleba by Jorginho, but the referee waves play on. And then a disappointing cross at Dingra, who had Welbeck in some space in the centre, cannoned it in too close to the goalkeeper. That needed a more delicate delivery. Certainly did. Brilliant football from Brighton, though. Fantastic counter-attack led by Baleba. 
ball into Welbeck, a little flick off, and he continues his run. Najinga on this right hand side. He's just trying to play Welbeck back in, who's in on goal. Doesn't quite get it right. Too much purchase on the through ball, but brilliant football. Nil nil at the Amex. We have uh, reached the midway point of the first half. Saka cushions ahead on the edge of the penalty area that Arsenal are attacking. It comes back to him off his Stupignon. It just wouldn't sit up for Odegaard. And Inciso clears it away out of the penalty area. But no doubt that Arsenal are applying most of the pressure at the moment. White tries to send the pass forward. Cut out by Stupignan. Saka comes in to put pressure on him. Very competitive this game. No one gets time on the ball. Motor inside the centre circle. Lofts it through the air to the near touchline to Adingra. Lamptey's available outside of him. Arsenal quickly dragging bodies back into defensive positions. This is Baleba. Midway inside Arsenal territory. Infield to Pascal Gross. Brighton pushing very high up. Duncan Van Hecker. Even they are a good 10, 15 yards inside the Arsenal territory. Van Hecker has it here in a central location. Both coaches, both wearing all black, stand and look on from the very edge of their technical areas. Dunk gives it to Estupinian on the left-hand side. No real high press from Arsenal here. They're happy for Brighton to have it in the central third. Van Hecker with the blonde hair comes forward. He threads a lovely ball through to Welbeck. And this is Lamptey. And Zinchenko's got to be careful. And out comes Raya. Lamptey wants a penalty. I doubt if he'll get it. The referee points towards a goal kick. VAR, of course, will look. Lamptey struggling with Zinchenko, leaning shoulder to shoulder into each other. I think the biggest question here is about Raya, who comes out and makes the challenge. But I, no, Lamptey surely slipped down. He was already going down. What do you make of it? I don't think it was. It's a collision between goalkeeper and Lamptey, but brilliant football from Brighton again. Van Heck, I have a needle pass into Welbeck, and then Lamptey's making the run in behind Zinchenko. He just about does enough. He just gets his body into him to make it difficult. Raya comes out. And they both kind of get there at the same time. The ball almost kind of comes off Lamptey's knee, and there's a collision. I'm sure they'll have a look at it, but I don't think it was, Connor. No, I think he was, because he was leaning into Zinchenko, who hadn't fouled him, he was off balance, he, his feet gave away, he was on the way down, and then the goalkeeper collided into him. And in those situations, the video system referees tend to not give penalties, and that is what has transpired here. Check complete, Brighton nil, Arsenal nil. Five Live and BBC Sands at the Amex. This tea time game of big importance at the top of the table, but very important for Brighton too, of course, as they hold on to a hope of getting back into Europe. This season has been Brighton's first European campaign. They want to go back. That looked like a handball there from Motor. He went in to close down Raya. His arms were outstretched as Raya kicked it away. It seemed to come off the arm of the pole, but the referee says play on. Welbeck tries to cushion a ball for Enciso. White, very composed, spins away from him. Arsenal have it just on the edge of their own penalty area. Jorginho back to Saliba. Pressure from Baleva. Saliba gets it away up towards Saka. Arsenal still inside their own half. And Brighton temporarily playing with 10 men here because Tarek Lamptey is a problem. And he's sitting down near the halfway line. Eventually, the ball goes out of play on the far side, and the referee invites some treatment to come on for Tariq Lamptey. The game's been played at a frantic pace. Both teams really aggressive, out of possession as well. Both teams been very good in possession, but Brighton there looking to press high. Harry and the likes of Saliba on the ball, trying to force those mistakes. Lamptey just going down off the ball, just looks like that left ankle. I'm sure if it was in that previous collision there with... Goalkeeper David Ryers, he looked to get the other side of Zinchenko, but great intensity to this game from both sides. Uh, earlier on today, Manchester City beat Crystal Palace by four goals to two, two goals from Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland back in the goals as well. Both those players who were left out of the uh, game in midweek against Aston Villa, but returning to score for Pep Guardiola uh, today. Villa themselves held to a 3 3 draw by Brentford, another two goals for. Ollie Watkins, Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3. Very important win for Burnley. Sean Dyche winning against his old... Uh, sorry, for Everton. For Sean Dyche against his old team, Burnley. Burnley finished with 10 men. Calvert-Lewin's goal just before half-time. Saw that one finish. Everton won. Burnley nil. Uh, Newcastle won away from home. A Bruno Guimaraes uh, goal late on. Uh, saw it finish. Fulham nil. Newcastle won at Craven Cottage. And a big win for Luton 2. Luton 2, Bournemouth 1. 
Clark and Morris with the goal. Morris getting the winner in the 90th minute. There was much consternation about that. And you can see all the drama on much match of the day later on this evening. Uh, Wolves were beaten at home at Molyneux. It finished Wolves 1, West Ham 2, Lucas Paqueta and James Ward Prowse with the goals there. So, as it stands in the Premier League, Liverpool are top of the table, Manchester City in second, Arsenal, if this was to finish in a draw, would stay in third with, after this evening, just seven games to play. Play is back underway, Lamptey has had treatment, he wants to come back on, but he's not been invited to do so yet. Arsenal of possession, playing from right to left as we look down. Jorginho feeds it to Zinchenko on the left-hand side. Just for the moment, a Dingra has had to drop back as a makeshift right back. Now Lamptey's been invited back on. Declan Rice in the penalty area, gives it to Jorginho. Nice little shimmy in there. And then as he clears the ball away, there's been a foul. A foul on a Dingra, who went down very dramatically, and a free kick has been given to Brighton inside their own penalty area. Well, I think what both teams do this evening, in terms of what they do in out of possession, is going to be just as important what they do with the ball on that occasion here but in sat deep they're almost in a back six there looking to make things really compact nullify those spaces in the end arsenal looking to go for a central area and they're able to draw the foul brighton if you're just showing our coverage both teams have had good chances here in the opening half an hour at the amex and pascal gross plays the ball down the left wing for inciso to canter after but ben white had a head start on him and the arsenal right back comfortably gets there first Gabriel brings it out of the penalty area. Short to Zinchenko on the left-hand side. And he'll turn with no easy pass forward and give it back to the goalkeeper, David Raya, who then plots the pass through the midfield and picks out Odegaard. Norwegian gives it on to Ben White, directly in front of us, an exasperated Roberto De Zerbi there, who doesn't like how easy are, so we're able to play through the Brighton press there. Great Italian gesticulation from De Zerbi there to show he was unhappy. As Gabriel Jesus has it on the edge of the penalty area, gives it to Jorginho, back out to the left-hand side to Zinchenko. Zinchenko will creep in field. This is all close touch triangular passing from Arsenal, edge of the box, left-hand side. Zinchenko now plays it into a more central area to Saliba, and Brighton have everyone back behind the ball. De Zerbi's way out of his penalty area here. Drilling on the instructions to his team, wants to keep up this intensity that has been causing Arsenal problems at times. Ball from Gabriel to the left wing, picks out Gabriel Jesus. He steps into the penalty area and goes down, but it was a clean tackle. Oh, referee's pointed to the spot. I thought that was a clean tackle from Derek Lamptey. John Brooks has pointed to the penalty area, and Gabriel Jesus has won a penalty for his team here. That could be a big, big deal in the title race. Into the penalty area. Lamptey came out towards him, and down goes Gabriel Jesus. Penalty! Well, does he get anything on the ball? Just looking at the replay, oh, I think maybe that left foot just makes contact with the ball. Jesus picks the ball up on the left-hand side, driving at Lamptey, who wants to make the challenge. I'm thinking just hold him up there, but as he looks the dart inside of him, just sticks that left leg out. Does he get something on the ball there? And then the contact after. Tarek Lamptey, who'd been off receiving treatment a few minutes ago. It was great acceleration for Gabriel Jesus. He really pounced into the penalty area and then tried to skip around Lamptey, who gets a little glance at the ball and then, no doubt about it, does follow through into Gabriel Jesus and trips him up. And that's why John Brooks has pointed to the spot, VAR still analysing it in the background. These are big moments, not just in this game, but in the title race. Odegaard has the ball, he's ready to go. Now he's handed it to Bukayo Saka. Brighton nil, Arsenal nil. We've got just over ten minutes of normal time to play in the first half. And Bukayo Saka has the opportunity to put his team in front here. Arsenal who have scored every penalty they have taken this season. The last one they missed was this month last year, and it was Bukayo Saka against West Ham. Here, he faces up to Verbruggen, and he scores! Bukayo Saka puts the Brighton goalkeeper the wrong way, and in this tight first half of the Amex, it's Arsenal who draw first blood. Saka's goal again! He's 14th in the Premier League this season. It is now the best scoring top flight campaign of his career. It's a big, big goal for Arsenal. 
And he doesn't miss many Saka, does he? Sends the keeper the wrong way. So opens that left foot out, right into the side netting. Brilliant execution. Lamptey has to do better, has to hold Jesus up. He doesn't, he dives in, gives the penalty away. It's a brilliant one, he really is. Big, big goal for Arsenal in this game. It is a first goal in five games in all competitions for Bukayo Saka. It is a sliding celebration towards the corner flag. Arsenal, who are well aware that their title challenge petered out around about this time last season, and they do not want that to happen again. Brian and Hove Albion nil, Arsenal won. As things stand, Arsenal are moving back to the top of the Premier League tonight, but a long way to go here. Yeah, but in terms of chances, they've been the better of the two teams. Arsenal really have empty there in that situation his decision making he's just got to hold Jesus up there he's running at him which is really difficult he gets caught in that 1v1 situation he's just got to try and jockey him as he cuts inside make it difficult for him but decides to stick that left and that thinks he could win the ball he doesn't here's a chance of a counter-attack for Brighton as Stupignon has picked out a Dingra into the penalty area he goes dances his way around Zinchenko and then shoots and it actually hits his old teammate that's unfortunate for Brighton Welbeck who was running ahead of him blocks the shot as the free kick is awarded here for the home side and it is about midway between the centre circle and the penalty area that I still defend free kick for Brighton 1-0 they trail on five live both teams looking dangerous, were unable to get the ball quickly into wide areas. So that makes it very difficult to kind of get that cover across and double up on the wide players. And that's where the Arsenal goal came from. Quick ball out to Jesus to create that 1v1 situation. Brighton trying to do something similar, getting the ball out to Adingra. Trying to get Zinchenko into a 1v1 situation. Adingra hasn't really done anything as of yet, though, with the ball that he's got. So Pascal Gross will take the free kick. It's not a shooting position. Mind you, Raya just wants Jorginho to stand as a one-man wall anyway, just in case. Uh, Gross has got all his teammates to his left as he looks. Yellow boots on for the German. Here he comes, one-step run-up. Plays it into the penalty area. Dunk was the target of the back post, and Gabriel beat him, and it goes out for a Brighton throw on the far side. Brighton nil, Arsenal one. Saka's penalty. Brighton, who three times this season have come back to win Premier League games after conceding the opening goal, but this is going to be difficult now against a side as accomplished as Arsenal. And Arsenal team still unbeaten in the Premier League in 2024. Saliba with an interception for the visitors. A chest down by Odegaard to Saka, who tries to step over, but his Stupignon wasn't buying that. Crunches in, ball goes out for a throw into Arsenal on the far side. They're just a really well done machine, this Arsenal team. We know what they're capable of doing, the attacking players that they have, but this season defensively absolutely magnificent. And it was good delivery from Gross on a free kick into that far post area, but Arsenal head on it. They defend their 18 yard box ever so well. This is Saliba at the heart of the Arsenal defence. Five live in BBC Sands, Brighton nil, Arsenal won the Saka penalty coming in the 33rd minute. Odegaard has possession, 10 yards inside Brighton territory, gives it back to Saliba on the halfway line. Arsenal who do tend to, to walk taller once they have scored the first goal in the game. White attacks down the right as well to get to the byline, and then Donk has collided with Van Hecker, the two Brighton defenders hit the tech, but they get it out for a corner. Kai Havertz was in between them. And somehow Duncan Van Hecker were able to shovel it away. Yeah, really dangerous ball from Ben White. He makes that run in behind Estepinian. And it looks like the ball's going to go out, but he gets there and he whips a really dangerous ball into that near post area. I think it's from Van Heck coming across. He does a good job in the end, just collides with Lewis Dunk. Corner will be taken by Saka. This could be a big, big night for Arsenal. They would love a second goal ahead of half time. Havertz has made a darting run from the back post to the front. It's curled into a central area, two-fisted punch by the goalkeeper for Bruggen. And then uh, an attempt to win it by Balev on the edge of the box. And uh, a challenge on him results in a free kick to Brighton and a chance to relieve some pressure.
Brighton nil. Arsenal one. Arsenal who drew nil nil against Manchester City last weekend. Otherwise, they have won every other Premier League game they have played in since the turn of the year. Saliba, short touch to Jorginho, who stabs it all the way back to Raya, wearing all black away to our right-hand side. His short ball to Gabriel, low to the feet here of Declan Rice, who's got two around him, Baleba makes the challenge, but he is over vigorous there, and Baleba fouls Rice, free kick to Arsenal. Yeah, a little bit over-aggressive there, Baleba, because that ball comes into Declan Rice, his touch kind of skips up, so doesn't really need to be that aggressive, make the challenge. Just looking at this penalty again. Difficult for us to see on the angle on the monitor. Does it just slightly come off Lanty's? It looks like it hits his left boot and then a contact kind of comes immediately after. And to debate Connor. In the in the old days we would have said we play gets, on. No, we, we would have <laughs> yeah, yeah. We would have said he gets the ball first. Yeah. That, that used to be a really prominent expression of football. But that, that's not the rule anymore. You can get the ball first and still be deemed to be, for example, you could get a red card after getting the ball first, you could be reckless, you can you can still make a foul despite getting the ball first, but it, it, it is in that charcoal grey area. And, uh, of course, when the stakes are as high as they are, yeah. that one will, of course, as is the modern world, be hotly debated. Yeah, you, you've got to be so careful these days as a defender, you really have, when players are running at you in the 18-yard box, you've got to be absolutely sure you're going to step in and make the challenge got to be absolutely sure that you're going to win the ball because as you say Connor even if you win the ball these days and you go in over aggressively and hit the man after it'll still be given as a penalty and, and you know that is what was impressive about the Gabriel surge you know the fact that he came in with such pace into the penalty area is what forced the collision in the first place and he's so good at that I think over the past few years Sterling Jamie Vardy and and uh, and Gabriel Jesus they've been the three players who've won the most penalties in the Premier League as Estupinion comes in the attack down the left-hand side for Brighton could they get back on level terms by half-time Gabriel has hurt himself winning possession here on the edge of the Arsenal box and Saka anywhere will do as he clears it away into the crowd on the far side and Gabriel goes down and he needs some treatment I think it's something that we don't see enough from wide players these days you know, being direct, getting in those 1v1 situations and looking to take your fall back on. You see a lot of wide players now where they want to play 1-2s, they want to come inside and link. Really positive from Jesus there. Go straight at Lamptey and almost forces the decision from him. And a break in play here while Gabriel receives some treatments. There are four minutes remaining of normal time in the first half. Brighton nil, Arsenal 1. This is five live from the BBC. With England playing the Euro 2025 qualifiers this weekend, make sure to subscribe to the Women's Football Weekly. New episodes every Wednesday. Uh, plenty of behind-the-scenes footage too from St George's Park on our Instagram page. You can follow at Five Live Sport. And for those of you wondering who to captain uh, for the next game week, Fantasy 606 is the answers. Ali Bruce Ball, Chris Sutton, and David O'Brien with all things Fantasy Premier League. That's available every week on BBC Sounds. Still, Gabriel receiving treatment, and but the game's coming thick and fast now. And with that back four, particularly the right back and the two central defenders being so consistent, I cannot tell. I wouldn't want this to be anything of too much concern for Gabriel. Gabriel, who had an early chance to open the scoring here, he put his header wide after doing really well to get in ahead of the goalkeeper, and he's been a busy defender ever since. It's the penalty from Bukayo Saka that separates the teams. Gabriel is back up on his feet. He is walking off. You would you would guess he's going to be OK. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be OK. That partnership of Saliba and Gabriel, so, so important, has transformed this Arsenal team. For me, it's allowed them to push a lot higher at the pitch, hold a higher defensive line. The full-backs can kind of push on. They can defend kind of 2v1, 2v2 with the athleticism that they have. So... Some really important players in this Arsenal team, and that kind of centre-back pairing is one of them. Yeah, no coincidence. Last year, when the the title charge came off the rails for Arsenal, that it was when Saliba got injured, and that that partnership was disrupted. Here is Lewis Dunk in possession for Brighton, well up over the halfway line. Such a high press. I mean, the, the risk they play with the the speed that Arsenal have on the counter attack, but Brighton do it. Here is Inciso twisting and turning on the edge of the penalty area, left hand side, swings it across. Saved by David Raya. 
who did so well to leap and to hang in the air and to push it away. We know Inciso could hit them to the top corner. That was a fine strike. You know, he's not the tallest goalkeeper, David Raya, but he had some spring in his heels there. Yeah, he does have fantastic athleticism. He's on the full stretch there, really good save. First time Raya's been called into action. Great play from Inciso, twisting, turning, looking to find that far corner. Corner comes in from Gross, headed down by Van Hecker. Welbeck's going to sprint out to try and keep the ball in play, but Arsenal all ran out as the corner came in, and when Van Hecker headed it down, Danny Welbeck was in an offside position. That's a well-worked defensive set-piece manoeuvre there from Arsenal. Gabriel is on, but he is still hobbling a little bit on the edge of his own penalty area. Brighton nil, Arsenal won. Yeah, better from Brighton, though. They've had some threatening moments in this first half, but not enough end product. They've not worked David Raya enough. They do there. That's what he's capable of, and see, so twisting, turning on that left-hand side of the 18-yard box. He creates that half a yard to get the strike away, looking to curl it into that far corner. It is finding the far corner, needed to be saved. Ball goes out of play on the far side, throw into Arsenal. Brighton started this game very well. They just had a good chance from Inciso, but in the main, it has been Arsenal who've been controlling matters, and they lead by that Bukayo Saka penalty to nil. Saliba near the centre circle, goes around Danny Welbeck, plays a pass out to the right-hand side to Ben White again, to Zerbi's upset, doesn't like when Arsenal defenders are able to go past his pressing players. In the end, White's cross is harmless, goes straight to the Brighton goalkeeper. Yeah, so comfortable, Saliba, when he steps into those midfield areas, really is the full package, defensively very good, we know what an athlete he is, but so calm on the ball as well, quite happy to kind of step into bodies into midfield there and to start that Arsenal attack off. Into stoppage as we go, uh, there's been a few delays, injuries and the penalty and the VAR and all that and there will be seven minutes to be added. Zinchenko has possession for Arsenal just in front of us, brings it over the halfway line, plays a 1-2 with Gabriel Jesus, back in field again to Declan Rice, Declan Rice who captained England last week against Belgium, Odegaard Receives on the halfway line and sprints away from Inciso. Rolls it to the feet of Bukayo Saka, edge of the penalty area that Arsenal attack. Inciso, who's done some great defensive work, gets back, gets right in the face of Bukayo Saka and forces him to retreat. And Arsenal back to the centre circle once again. Been really impressed with Inciso's defensive contribution in this first half. Here's Ben White, though. Just outside the penalty area, on the right for Arsenal. Tries to flick it forward, takes a deflection. Brighton want to keep it in play. A little bit dangerous, but for Bruhan hacks it out towards the sideline and Ciso tries to keep it in play and it goes for a throw and Arsenal take the throw quickly trying to increase the acceleration good work by Pascal Gross and that's another throw into the visitors Arsenal still lead 1-0 and thoroughly deserved Connie you'd have to say on the chances created they've had the better the chances of the two teams and they do look threatening every time they're able to kind of get Odegaard in those little pockets of space and he's getting turned and Cecil's having to do a lot of kind of defensive work getting back into that area Oh, a mistake at the back for Brighton and Kai Havertz should have scored it was a throw in that bounced in the penalty area goalkeeper and defender seemed to leave it to each other and a hesitation that was almost fatal Havertz stabbed the ball goal bump but he couldn't get it anywhere near on target another big chance for Arsenal and I don't think it's any exaggeration to say they could be 3-4 up in this game Mikel Arteta's team as Rice tries to cut in a low cross on the left hand side Lamptey has failed to clear it away Declan Rice gets another opportunity and he gives it short to Zinchenko just as on the penalty area runs into the box Gabriel Jesus to Saka so intricate from Arsenal tries to get the shot in Van Hecker makes the block and then a ding throws back to her back to the fence and he steals it away from Gabriel Jesus and he swerves around Zinchenko but then after doing it all so well he plays a terrible pass straight to Gabriel so Arsenal Arsenal come again, Arsenal leading 1-0 at the Amex, Borges out of play, they're all appealing that the throw-in should be theirs, and Brighton get the throw-in, well there's certainly plenty of spirit left from the host, and Arsenal may be in front, but this isn't over yet. It's just half a chance for Havertz, it's a difficult one for him, he's got the keeper right in front of him, it's a long throw into the box, Havertz makes the run, Lewis Dunk is just looking for his goalkeeper to come and collect, but that was never going to be the case, he needs to deal with that, and he gets bullied out of the way by Havertz, and... He just doesn't really have anywhere to go with the finish, Havis. He's trying to prod it past the goalie. Doesn't get it on target in the end, but 
trying to switch it off there from the throw-in. This game where if either team is in their own third, they might get a second or two on the ball, but inside the central third, you do not have a chance to breathe down there. The, the tackles come flying in. Neither team wants the other to have control of that central part of the pitch. Here's Welbeck rolling it back to Jakob Moder. Moder, who celebrates his birthday tomorrow, turns 25. Tarek Lamptey gives an infield to Jan-Paul van Hecke. He'd give it out to Lewis Dunk on the far side, back to Van Hecker once again. We have played three and a half of the seven minutes being added on for stoppages, so we're midway through. Dunk, good ball to Pascal Gross over the halfway line. He'll push it on to Inciso, running in off the touchline, towards the corner angle of the penalty area. White back pedaling away from him. Inciso sends in a low cross. Saliba is very calm and relaxed on the edge of the six-yard box. Takes a succession of touches before passing it away. And this is what Arsenal love to do, to play through a press. And this is why, because he creates the counter-attack opportunity. Gabriel Jesus to Odegaard, bearing down on the Brighton penalty area. Now Havertz in the box, tries to pull it back. Declan Rice was ready for the tap-in, but Brighton and are able to get it away, but that was wonderful to watch from Arsenal. Challenge on the far side. White went in hard and in CISO. Referee says play on, no foul. Brighton fans didn't like that. Saka gives it back to White. They all think he's offside. Cross comes in. Declan Rice just outside the six yard box. Belatedly, the flag goes up to much consternation from tens of thousands of Brighton fans who could see that was offside at the moment it happened, but the officials are told to wait. And eventually it goes up, and it is a free kick to Brighton, who trail here by a goal to nil. Yeah, Brighton delighted to see that linesman's flag go up. What a goal that would have been, by the way. Unacceptable play from Saliba in his own box. The composure shown there, under pressure, bodies around him, and Arsenal are able to play their way out, and they go right up the other end and, and almost score desperate defending from Brighton in the end. It's something we've seen such a, a sea change in, in recent years, how... You know, central defenders who it was drilled into them. You know, if in the edge your own six yard box, you just get rid of it. And now they will take touch, they will swerve, they'll sell dummies, they'll they'll even try nutmegs. I mean, it is unbelievable inside your own penalty area six yard box. But the reason is if you can break through, it creates so much space down the other end. You almost saw the perfect example there, Connor. Mistake at the back by Baleba, giving the ball away to Odegaard, who's into the penalty area for Arsenal. Welbeck is back helping out the defence and did some good work there. I think Brighton could do with the half-time whistle here, they need a breather. Saka into the penalty area, low cross, Van Hecker cuts it out, and Dunk should be able to clear away. But again, he was to dribble his way out, and he gives it short to Estupinian. And Odegaard is going to try and pin them in there. Brighton have, have lost it. That was bound to happen. Odegaard has it, just outside the box now. Into the penalty area to Declan Rice. Arsenal would love a second by the break. Saka tried to return it. It's so intricate in there. It's like five aside in a contained space, and the ball eventually is pinged out of the penalty area, and Brighton try to work their way out. And this is one for the purest of possession football. East sides never want to just clear it away long. They certainly don't, but I've got to say, the out-of-possession work is fantastic as well. Arsenal there pressing high making it really difficult for Brighton to get out. We know how good they are in possession. They can make you look silly at times if you get the press wrong, but Arsenal forcing mistakes. Here comes Motor over the halfway line. Declan Rice puffing, trying to keep up with him. Adingra towards the edge of the penalty area. Has got Tarek Lamptey back behind. A ball into the penalty area. Motor's offside. He knew he was. The body language. As soon as the ball came to him, he knew he was off. And that is a free kick to Arsenal. You mentioned a, a very good point there, Danny, about how well the pressing has been as the whistle goes to the break. These are two teams who know the value of possession, and that's why they will work so hard to deny the other. One goal separates them at the break, a penalty scored by Bukayo Saka, won by Gabriel Jesus' thrust into the penalty area. Saka took it so well, and Arsenal, as they stand, Danny, heading back to the top of the Premier League tonight. Yeah, really important goal for Arsenal. What a first half we've seen. The energy, the pace, the intensity that both teams have played with. You have to say Arsenal deserve it of their lead. They've created the better chances in that first half. Gabriel should have scored. Jesus had a header. And then obviously the mistake from Lamptey, the foul on Jesus, and cool composure shown from the spot by Bakayo Saka. 
They've had their moments, Brian. They've looked threatening when they've got around the 18-yard box of Arsenal's, but not enough end product. Arsenal going 1-0 up and thoroughly deserved. Booze for referee John Brooks as he makes his way down into the tunnel. That's been the, the big talking point. Lamptey, who got a touch of the ball, but then brought down Gabriel Jesus. Every penalty so hotly disputed these days. It is Brighton nil, Arsenal 1 at half-time. Second half on the way elsewhere in the Premier League today. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4, Aston Villa 3. Brentford 3, Everton beat 10-man Burnley 1-0, Newcastle won 1-0 at Fulham. Luton came from a goal down to beat Bournemouth 2-1 uh, and West Ham did the same as they won 2-1 at Molyneux with a controversial Max Kilman equaliser ruled out in the 99th minute uh, by VAR. You'll hear from Gary O'Neill uh, during half-time. Uh, elsewhere, Ipswich and Leeds both lost in the Championship, so Leicester go top after they beat Birmingham and Birmingham have now dropped into the bottom three because Huddersfield beat Millwall. Another side in the bottom three, Sheffield Wednesday, got a big win at QPR. Portsmouth have an eight-point lead at the top of League One after they beat Shrewsbury. Carlisle's relegation was confirmed today as they were beaten at Northampton. In League Two, Stockport stay top. Wrexham went second, MK Dons third, because Mansfield dropped to fourth out of the automatic promotion spots after losing 4-1 to Crawley, at home to Crawley as well. One promotion uh, sorted in the Scottish League, and that's in Scottish League 2. Stenhouse Muir uh, will play in League 1 next season. European Champions Cup Rugby Union this weekend. Uh, earlier on today, wins for Bulls over Lyon, Exeter over Bath, and La Rochelle against Stormers after they came from 13-0 down at half-time to win by 22 points to 21. And Saracens will need a second-half comeback as well. James Burridge. They will, because Bordeaux are 10 points to nil up at half-time, Mark. It's uh, taken a while for Bordeaux to get on the score sheet. 36 minutes, in fact. Garcia with a try in the corner. Maxime Luku has knocked over two kicks at goal. All because Mara Toji has been sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes. A deliberate knock-on when Bordeaux had a chance to score. They've actually had three tries ruled out. They have boss possession and territory. And in truth, Saracens have failed to fire a shot. Mark McCall's going to have to deliver a pretty seismic team talk if they're to get back in this contest. Bordeaux leading at half-time by 10 points to nil. Uh, Leinster against Leicester is an 8 o'clock kickoff in the same tournament. So during half-time at the Amex, you'll hear from Rob Edwards and Gary O'Neill, amongst others. First, Joe has the news, 26 minutes past six. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The British company Ambre is reporting that a vessel has been targeted off Yemen. It follows a number of attacks on cargo ships in the region by Houthis. More on this breaking news in the next bulletin. The Israeli army has recovered the body of a hostage in Gaza during an overnight operation. He's been named as Ilad Katzir, who was 47. The military said he'd been kidnapped on October the 7th by Islamic Jihad. Thousands of households across Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are without power because of high winds brought by Storm Kathleen. While flights and ferry crossings have been disrupted in western parts of the UK, the hottest temperature of the year so far has been recorded in eastern England. And two planes have collided at Heathrow Airport while one of them was being towed. Online videos show a Virgin Atlantic plane's wing touching a British Airways aircraft. There were no injuries. BBC Five Live. The home of Formula One. The third race of the season and it wasn't a Max Verstappen win. A dramatic break issue saw the Dutchman forced to retire from the race as Carlos Sainz, returning from appendix surgery, clinched the win around the Albert Park circuit. It was a very good feeling to be back on form. Very happy, very proud. Next up, Formula One heads to Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix. Sunday morning at six. Listen to live coverage of every lap on Five Live and BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Max Verstappen on pole uh, for tomorrow morning's Japanese Grand Prix, which uh, you can hear from 6am. 
full commentary here on Five Live or on the BBC Sport website. A couple of cricket scores uh, that you might want to know about. Today, Sam North East hit an individual record 335 not out at Lords uh, for Glamorgan against Middlesex. That goes past Graham Gooch's 333, uh, which he scored against India back in 1990. And in the IPL today, Virat Kohli hit 113 off 72 balls as RCB made 175 for four off 18 overs. Uh, Joss Butler uh, has replied with... Uh, oh, I've lost his score now. But anyhow, he was uh, he was 80 or 40, if I can find it. But anyhow, I'll find the exact details of Joss's score in just a moment. Uh, whilst I do that, let's get some football reaction. Uh, we'll go to Kenilworth Road. Luton coming from a goal down to beat Bournemouth 2-1. They're still in the drop zone, but only behind Nottingham Forest on goal difference. Here's Rob Edwards. It's been really hard for us this season. Obviously, that's why we're in the situation we're in. But the character that we showed... We found the result today when it was really, really important to do so. What was the key to turning it around? It certainly looked from an onlooker's point of view that when you sent on on your dimmer and bury, it seemed to give you a new lease of life and attack. I thought our second half thought was really good. I thought we were on the front foot when we conceded the goal. Um, you know, and I think my eyes and I think the stats have already shown me that as well, that the performance was there. They scored, they got such a threat, good quality. They scored a good goal, poor from our side, but there was a belief there. The subs definitely made an impact, you're right, 100%. I feel like we've had one and a half really difficult games against Bournemouth this year for everyone, you know, obvious reasons, you know. Tom's situation the first time and then to be 3 0 up and lose that game. So it, it is a nice feeling to be able to turn that around today and, um, and somehow, you know, grind out that win. What does the Saturday night celebration look like for you? <laughs> um, Glass of red and match the day? No, no, I'll probably be start. Losing sleep over we've got Man City away and we're next, so I'll just probably be up all night thinking, like, how do we stop them? Uh, Rob Edwards after their win. Right, let's do that cricket again properly. Virat Kohli, 113 off 72 balls as RCB hit 183 for three in the IPL. And uh, Joss Butler, currently 91 not out of 55 balls uh, as Rajasthan only need nine uh, off 10 balls to win that game. Back to the football at Goodison. Burnley remain 19th after losing 1-0 uh, to Everton. Dara O'Shea given a red card in the second half. That's Burnley's seventh dismissal of the season. Here's Vincent Company. Look, if you look at a game and, and you start a game and you look at what are the strengths of Everton, I definitely think we managed to limit the strengths of, of the opposition and I think we, we managed to um, create a, a game out of it at Goodison Park. That's never easy. But yeah, key moments for us, it, it's this game, it's other games. Yeah, we've been penalised for it. Whether it's errors or discipline, how disappointed and how damaging has that record been of seven dismissals this season? Because it's just taken the wind out of your team and, and made it so much harder to get these even kind of points here and there. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you, you are where you are in the league for a reason. So if the games are going in a way where we play well, where, you know... Most of the Premier League games, we really make a fight out of it. So we, we, we get back and we feel like, OK, we can look confidently to the next game because we've shown good things in this game. But there's a there's a willingness for us to work to, to improve. Six games left. Do you think you can get enough wins to, to stay up or do you think realistically you did need to, to to get the three points today? No, I just I just keep it really simple in my head. I mean, it's the last six games. We played extremely well and we could have won those those games, each and every one of them. And we didn't reward ourselves, so my hope is that in the next six games, whenever we play better than the opponent, that this this is associated to a result, which is often the case. Uh, James Ward-Prowse got West Ham's winner direct from a corner in the 84th minute at Molyneux as they won by two goals to one. However, Wolves denied an equaliser in the ninth minute of stoppage time. Uh, Max Kilman with the header... But VAR and the referee brought it back, deeming that Tawanda Chiroa, the, the substitute, was uh, offside and interfering with Lucas Fabianski. Here's Gary O'Neill. Terrible, terrible, terrible decision. Can't understand it at all. I spoke to David, and to be fair to David, he said the same. He said it's, no, no, it's never, ever, ever offside. Fabianski the same. Didn't think it was offside. So, yeah. Um, uh, crazy, really crazy that a uh, Premier League referee can stand in front of a screen, um, having been sent to it and get it so badly wrong. So the reason it's not offside, obviously he stood in a an offside position, but he's he's not impacted Fabianski being able to dive or move. He's not impacted his line of vision because if you if you watch the side on footage, Fabianski can clearly see the ball over mm. to Wanda's head. 
So I don't, I don't know how he can be interfering. Fab, Fabianski is getting nowhere near that header, no matter, no matter if there's no one there, someone there. So I think it's a, it's a really, really bad decision, and I don't understand how he reaches it. Have you had any explanation from any of the officials, and is there any way that you can understand how they would have come to that conclusion? If your knowledge of the game is really, really bad, you can come to that conclusion. But apart from that, I have no explanation for it. No, and I haven't, I haven't got an explanation from them, and it won't help us. You can see how the players sort of feel about it. The players have spoke earlier in the season around not feeling respected by the officials because of the number of decisions that went against us. And today again, having, you know, when we're as short as we are and we're having to fight and dig as much as we are to suffer that decision at that stage of the game was tough for the players to, to take. Mark Scott with the questions to Gary O'Neill. You can see it for yourself. Match of the day, 10.30 tonight on BBC One. Uh, Aston Villa were 2-0 up at home to Brentford before Brentford then went 3-2 up with three goals inside nine minutes. Ollie Watkins then got a late equaliser in the 80th minute. It was his second of the day. He's with John, well, he's with John Bennett. Ollie, it must be mixed feelings for you because two goals... But after being 2-0 up, it must feel like points dropped. How would you sum up the game? Frustrating. Um, you know, we just lack that that kind of big team mentality where they kill games out off, um, which is really disappointing. Obviously, I'm not belittling my team. I'm part of it. But um, I feel like we need, to, we need to somehow figure out when we're 2-0 up how to just shut up shop and, and, and stop them from creating chances. Yeah, it's really disappointing. But two more goals for you. What a season you are having back from injury. You must be absolutely thrilled with the way it's going this season for you. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, it's dropping for me. It's just my luck that one, the first one went over the line. You know, when you're having a drought or something like that, normally they don't go for you. But, um, yeah, it's, it's felt nicely for me. Um, I'm happy about that. I'm happy to be contributing to the team, scoring, trying to do the best I can. Um, but, you know, when I'm not scoring, I'm still trying to bring other people into play and cause uh, nightmare for the defenders. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying my football. Um, still a lot of football to be played. You know, we want to be getting in the Champions League spot. That's what we're playing for. So, um, yeah, six more games to go and a lot of football to be played. Ollie Watkins with John Bennett just waiting for the team to come, out, come back out at the Amex where it is Brighton nil, Arsenal 1. Full second half commentary on the way and then it will be 6.06 with Chris Sutton and Natalie Pike. Hello. 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 Very much looking forward to it. Chris will be here. He's currently travelling. He's been at Ipswich versus Norwich today. So he's going to want to talk about that, I'm absolutely sure. So loads happening today. If you would like to call us, book your call in right now. It's 08085 909 693. Everton fans, Luton fans, big wins today. How hopeful are you of staying up? What did you make of the games today? I want to speak to you. Wolves fans, Gary O'Neill there, sounding very, very cross. A terrible decision. Do you agree with him? And also, Villa and Brentford fans, what a game today. And also, a very busy day in the Championship. Leicester fans, you must be feeling a lot better now. And also, I want to speak to Leeds and Ipswich fans. What an exciting end to this Championship season we are having. So, book your call in with myself and with Chris Sutton now. It's 08085 909 693. I Ipswich fans may want to respond to Chris's tweet. Uh, superb result for Norwich City, who thoroughly deserve to win. Ipswich choke again in the derby. Uh, uh, Chris's words, uh, not ours. He's a wind-up merchant. Uh, and I'm guessing he'll be on his way to Ibrox as well for Rangers against Celtic tomorrow. It's like a crit, 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 God, if Celtic win that, he's going to be unbearable on Monday night. Thank you very much, Ashley. 08085 909 693. Teams coming back out at the Amex. Arsenal are a goal to the good Danny and Connor. Yes, thanks very much, uh, Mark. We are getting ready to... Uh, get back underway, sorry, just a, a little delay here. We, uh, we we couldn't hear ourselves, which is a very important part of the whole operation. Uh, we're getting ready to welcome the teams back out onto the field of the Amex. Arsenal, who've got the lead, and that normally means one thing, because uh, whenever this season Arsenal have been in front at halftime in the Premier League, they have always gone on uh, to win it. You've got to go back two years for the last time that, uh, that Arsenal were ahead of the break in a Premier League match but did not win the match. A lot of talk over halftime, Danny Cabanon, about the decisive penalty of those first 45 minutes and whether Gabriel Jesus was indeed fouled by Tarek Lamptey because Lamptey clearly does get a touch of the ball first, then makes the connection. 
It's a tricky one, and, and it's almost split. I mean, we, we've met people who are adamant both ways. Well, what's your view on it now, having seen it a few more times? Well, I think it's, a, you could say, maybe it's a modern-day penalty. I don't know, as you were saying, on the commentary in the first half there, Connor, maybe back in the day, you know, you win the ball, get the ball slightly first there, and you maybe get away with that. But you can see Lamp did it. He, he, he's, he makes his mind up almost straight away. He sees Jesus get the ball after his touch. He's thinking, right, I'm going to go and hit him and try and win the ball, almost catch him off guard. Jesus is ready for it. He cuts inside. There is a slight touch, I think, on his left boot. And then the contact comes in and he kind of takes him out. So uh, I'd probably be a little bit disappointed. Well, maybe I'm part of the defenders union. <laughs> I don't know. Trying to defend Lamptey there. But um, I think he's just got to stand up there and make it difficult for him. The, the minute you kind of lunge in, if you're not sure, if you can't clearly win the ball, then you're always going to run the risk of giving a penalty away. And, you know, I'm, I'm still not too sure, Con. I don't know what you think. It's, it's, it's one of those a few years ago the defender would have pointed at the ball. You know, I got the ball, yeah. I got the ball. But, but that's not the rule anymore. You know, you can get the ball and still give away a penalty. Anyway, it has been given. It does stand. It is a goal that, at the moment, has Arsenal back on top of the Premier League again. This is the 20th time this season that the lead in the Premier League has switched, assuming they hold on for this. As a shot from Inciso to the edge of the area, that goes through to David Raya, who makes the save. First chance of the second period, and it's for Brighton, how they would like to lay down a good marker now at the start of this second period. No changes in personnel, by the way, over the break. Same starting 11s that begun the game. I'll give you a full rundown of them once we get a break in play. Raya's clearance up towards Declan Rice. Jumping with him is the energetic Baleba. And Baleba, another one of these very confident youngsters in the Brighton team. You still have to check that he only turned 20 in January. But he's a, he's a physical presence in that midfield, and he jumped with Declan Rice there and challenged for the ball well. So Verbruggen is the Brighton goalkeeper. Back four of Lamptey, Van Hecker, Dunk and Estupinian, the two fullbacks coming into the team as changes from midweek. Then it's Enciso and Adringa, either side of Baleba and Moda in midfield. Pascal Gross in there too, with Welbeck as the central striker. Gabriel Jesus hoping to get a corner here. Lamptey, has he been able to keep it in play? No. Referee says it had gone out before Lamptey brought it back in again. So. 90 seconds into the second period, Arsenal their first attacking set piece of the second half. It's going to be interesting to see if both teams can kind of keep up the pace of that first half. It really was played at high intensity. If it does maybe slow down the game or does open up, who will that better serve of the two teams? I'm not too sure. Maybe Arsenal, who are a one nil in front. Brighton, they'll continue to play the same way try and get a bit more end product this second half to try and get back into this game. Declan Rice plays in the corner, and it was Gabriel arriving at the back post. Tarek Lamptey's went half as tall as Gabriel was marking him, but the Brazilian wasn't able to get a clean header, and Brighton were able to get it away. Mind you, did it glance an arm in there, and the referee, John Brooks, is delaying the restart from the throw-in. While the video assistant referee has a look at this, Gabriel jumps, it hits the, I think, armpit at best of, of Tarek Lamptey, but... No surprise that it's a quick check complete and no penalty awarded there. Arsenal of possession, just on the edge of the penalty area of the attack. Saliba, silver boots, has a look up, who's around? Gives it to the right-hand side to Kai Havertz. To the byline he goes, Inciso's with him. Havertz floats it in, Gabriel Jesus hits just wide! Brilliant cross, brilliant leap from Gabriel Jesus. And he nearly found the back of the net with a header. That's flowing football from Arsenal. Yeah, not the easiest of chances, but he should hit the target. Brilliant pick out from Havertz. He just floats it up to that far post. He gets the mismatch. Jesus up against Lamptey, gets above him, wins the header, but not directed on target. Foul by Saliba on Danny Welbeck. Big roar from the Brighton fans. I think a bit of sarcasm laced in there. They feel they're not getting the rub of the green and the referees decision-making in this game. You know, if you were to be critical of Arsenal, it's been the quality of their finishing tonight. They scored from a penalty, otherwise they've not been able to get enough on target. Here comes Havertz, into the penalty area, hits the deck. It was a shoulder charge from Baleba, it's no penalty. It is play on as Verbruggen has it in his hands. The Arsenal team, by the way, Raya the goalkeeper, back for White, Saliba, Gabriel and Zinchenko. Midfield three, Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice. Front three, Saka, Havertz and Gabriel Jesus. Danny Gabadon's alongside me. Oh, just give and it there's away. a mistake at the back. Van Hecker just about recovers because Kai Havertz was almost in. Yeah, they're doing a good job, Arsenal, with that press. We saw moments 
in the first half when he pressed high, really aggressive, and Brighton just losing the ball in dangerous areas. They'll have to be better this second half if they're going to continue to play that way, which they will. They need to find a way of being a bit more assured in possession and looking to break through that Arsenal kind of midfield line. But Arsenal doing a really good job up until this point and making it difficult. 6 6 to come with Natalie Pike and Chris Sutton tonight. Once the live football has come to an end here on 5 Live. Uh, and Ciso here plays the ball forward with Zinchenko, has missed on the edge of the area. And a drinker was arriving, and Zinchenko, who should have cleared that away, has had to put it out for a corner. Well, he looks bemused of the referee, but it was his own hesitation there. Alexander Zinchenko, where there should have been no problem. Now Arsenal have to defend a corner. It's a ball played inside him, he's trying to control it with his right foot, Zinchenko. He misses it completely. And Dingo gets in behind him, forces the corner. Silly mistake, really, should have dealt with that better. Pascal Gross to take the corner kick. Arsenal with everyone back inside the penalty area to defend it. Five minutes played in the second period, 1-0 Arsenal. Header one at the front post by Gabriel. Comes to a Stupignon who tried to hit it full in the volley. Then he lashes it again the second time. Tell you, it was a good strike, but it just veered away from the target. Purvis is Stupignon, a son score a great goal. I think it was against Tottenham here in, in December when he lashed it from distance. Now, this is ridiculous. So, Ben White has come over and said something to his Stupignon there. His Stupignon has raised his hand and he's pushed it in, no big force or anything, but he's just laid his hand on the chest of Ben White, and Ben White has gone down as if he's been hit by a truck. And he hits the ground, and that is way over dramatic from Ben White, trying to infuse a situation where there was nothing there. It's still been nudged into him as he run back, and, and then he just goes down as if he's been punched. That's, that's not impressive, I don't think, from Ben White. Yeah, well, how often do we see it happen these days, Connor, with players? trying to get the opposition player sent off he's just jogging back into position maybe something got said slightly before that as he got that shot away and they, they kind of shoulder barge each other initially and then his left arm kind of comes out as the opinion it's nothing really and it's, it's almost three or four seconds then before Ben White decides to go down as well shocking really yeah Ben White that, that, that's what made it worse was the delay and he's oh oh I think I'll go down here and it made him embarrassing actually for Ben White He's had a very good game. Uh, he's not covered himself in glory there. Now, Gabriel's attempt to cross it away blocked by Moder. Brighton's high press continues to make life difficult for us. It's been great the times when Arsenal can break through it, but there have been many times when Arsenal haven't been able to break through this Brighton press. And Sinchenko doesn't take any chances here. You rarely see that from an Arsenal player at the back, but he's just lumped it forward. Long ball up towards the halfway line. Odegaard gets it down on the deck. Boos for Ben White after that bit of play acting a moment ago. Rice will give it over to Gabriel Jesus, just outside the penalty area, left wing for Arsenal. Odegaard's made a darting run in the middle, Gabriel Jesus unable to find him, and now Enciso comes away with possession, but runs into Jorginho. Loose ball picked up by Moda, his pass goes straight to Gabriel. The turnover of possession is so frantic here. Brilliant from Arsenal there, though, just a stifle for that counter-attack. Brian winning the ball back on the edge of the eight-yard box and looking to counter quickly, but... Gabriel just reading where that pass was going to go, steps in. Brighton nil, Arsenal one. Arsenal going to the top of the table if they get the win here. Liverpool would be able to overtake them if they win at Old Trafford tomorrow. It's a 3.30 kickoff, and you can listen to the full game live here on 5 Live from the BBC. Jorginho gives it to Zinchenko on the far side. Ball back in field to Gabriel Jesus. He comes over the halfway line now, scanning the horizon, looking for options, plays a cam ball to Ben White, you'll tell by the booze. White gives it up to Bukayo Saka, scorer of Arsenal's goal here. His Stupignon goes in field with him, and that's created space in the left-back position for Brighton for Kai Havertz to step into the penalty area. White's outside him, Havertz back to Martin Odegaard. Brighton need to get tight, and it just clips the crossbar on the way through. Fingertipped onto the crossbar by Verbruggen. Odegaard so close to a second goal for Arsenal. Yeah, great strike on his weaker right foot, shifts it onto that right foot, straight at the keeper. But it looks like it's dipping, it's moving a little bit, and he, that right arm goes up. It's a really good save. Rapid movement from Odegaard to push it into space and to pull the trigger all in one motion. And for Bruggen, who's been beaten from the penalty spot but has dealt with everything else that's been thrown at him today. Arsenal lead by a goal to nil. 14 minutes played in the second half. In fact, sorry, I'm going to do that again. Nine minutes played in the second half. 
Saka going to take the corner. Odegaard available short, and it is played short. Odegaard back to Saka, to the edge of the box to Zinchenko. Scoops it for Saka, in the box, can he control? Pulls it in low, Gabriel Jesus turns and shoots it away by Pascal Gross. Arsenal are banging on the door for a second. And certainly Ali look vulnerable, Brighton. Set piece, they don't clear, really difficult to clear their 18-yard box, Brighton. It's a strike that gets blocked and eventually Brighton able to clear, but as you say, Connor knocking on the door, Arsenal trying to get this all-important all second goal. Gabriel out of the back for Arsenal. Declan Rice in a left-back position, plays it into the midfield. Gabriel Jesus sold to Donny, hoping it would run through to Havertz, but Brighton regained possession. Then Inciso gives it away. Dunk wins it back. Just one team to the other, winning the ball off each other constantly. And Cecil with tricky footwork. White fouls him, free kick Brighton. Big roar from the Brighton fans who are not happy with Ben White anyway in the second half. And it's a free kick that's outside shooting distance, but still a good attacking platform. Brighton nil, Arsenal won. Yeah, great feat. And Cecil, he's got three or four Arsenal players around him, and he somehow twists, turns, goes past Jorginho, draws the foul, the ball changing hands there quickly on two or three occasions but really good feet there from Nciso to draw the foul he had lots of players around him and limited options fans of Manchester City and Liverpool listening our way will be urgent praying for Brighton to get an equaliser here Stupignon touches it for Pascal Gross not your usual free kick routine. They give it to Inciso on the left hand side. Arsenal haven't stepped out. Inciso to the byline. Tries to go around Saka. Saka challenges him out for a corner. Corner to Brighton as they continue to try and win momentum in this game. I'll give it straight back to Inciso. I thought the ball might get whipped in directly, but they worked that 1v1 with Saka. And Cesar, I just thought he created half a yard to cross the ball on his left foot. Elected to take an extra touch, trying to drive fully past Saka, who gets back with defensive work. Brighton forcing the corner. Entertaining game of the Amex. You feel anything could happen at any moment. Arsenal have had a lot of big chances, but they haven't been able to add to Pakayo Saka's successful penalty. Pascal goes to take the Brighton corner. There's all kinds of pushing in there, and the referee blows the whistle. Now, that all happened before the corner kick was taken. So play not actually active, but there was a lot of pushing and shoving. And Lewis Dunk is the main player being spoken to by the referee, John Brooks. Take two at the corner. Pascal Gross is ready. It's going to be a right-footed kick. Brighton playing right to left of the second half. Again, there's all kinds of pushing. Header won by Ben White. And Cecil on the volley, can't keep it down. Left foot volley over the crossbar into the Brighton fans behind that goal. Yeah, difficult chance. Ball whipped into that near post area. It's an Arsenal man that makes the first contact. He's headed out to the 18-yard box, a looping header, and it just falls invitingly. And see so on the volley, takes it on, on his weaker left foot. Difficult chance, not able to hit the target. Brighton nil. Arsenal won. Saka's penalty was scored after 33 minutes. Already today. There were wins for Manchester City in the lunchtime game at Sellers Park. Everton beat Burnley, Newcastle won at Fulham. Home win for Luton against Bournemouth. And West Ham won away at Wolves. You can discuss it all with Chris and Natalie on 6-0-6 once this game is over. For Brooklyn, comes out of his penalty area, gets there ahead of Saka and puts the ball out of play for an Arsenal throw. Right-hand side as Mikel Arteta's team come forward. 57, 58 minutes on the clock. Saliba has it for Arsenal. Back into a central location to Gabriel. He'll float it down the right wing as Stupinian's header cushions the ball back to the Brighton goalkeeper for Brooklyn. Yeah, Stupinian Stupin there, just nodding that ball back to the goalkeeper. Could have actually left that roll out for the goal kick, but got it right in the end. Prentice to Stupinian, who's had one of Brighton's better opportunities of this second half. He scored against Arsenal at the Emirates last season. It was a game that Brighton won by three goals to nil. White to Saka. 
Back to Saliba, into Jorginho, tackled by Gross. Now the run forward, Saliba the head start back there, and he plays it over into space, and what he hoped was space to Zinchenko on the far side, but there's no space in this game. Baleba sprinted well to get across, he slid to get a touch, then he tried to keep it in play, and he wasn't able to do so, but great work rate from Carlos Baleba. It will be an Arsenal throw, they still lead 1-0. Yeah, just about gets away with that, Saliba looks to play a dangerous ball across field, could have gone back to his goalie, Baleba reading the intentions, slides in, gets the ball, but just not quite able to keep it in. We are so close to the Brighton bench here, we're just a few rows behind them, you can smell the deep heat, and uh, there is all sorts of activity down there as Roberto De Zerbi prepares to make at least one substitution. There's a lot of activity, Ansu Fati's having a word there. Let's see who does come on in presumably just a few minutes' time. Van Hecke has possession for Brighton. We're approaching the hour mark. 1-0 Arsenal lead. Crow stretches but is beaten for it by Jorginho. That's excellent from Jorginho. Saka now has spotted a run here of Declan Rice, who flicks it beyond Van Hecke. Tam La uh, Tariq Lamptey was sprinting back and makes a very important interception to roll it back to the goalkeeper. That was dangerous from Arsenal as very quickly Jorginho sent Rice on his way there. Here is Jorginho once again, the Italian international. Plays it. I don't think that was intended for Odegaard. Odegaard got a heavy touch and that's taken a bit of the progress out of things for the visitors. It's going to be Buena Noche and Chao Pedro certainly coming on for Brighton. Dunk makes an intercepting lunge on the edge of his own penalty area and Ciso comes away with the ball and rolls it to the right-hand side to Adingra. Adingra veers in field and Ciso will now take it on. Plows it into the stomach of Danny Welbeck. How he controlled that, I've no idea. Brighton lose the ball on the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. As Gabriel Jesus back helping out the defence, gives it to Zinchenko, and now to Odegaard. And this high pace, high tempo nature of the game continues. Arsenal are going to make two changes too. There's going to be a return to the Amex for the former Brighton man, Leandro Trossard. And Martinelli's got to come on, so two attacking players getting ready to enter the fray for Mikel Arteta. 1-0 Arsenal lead, five live and BBC sounds from the Amex. Here's Ben White, ten yards outside the Brighton penalty area. Right-hand side, he's got Saka outside him. Saka runs towards his Stupignon, comes in field of him, plays a decent left-footed delivery, but Dunk on the edge of his six-yard box, he's able to head it away. Comes back out to... White on the right-hand side, Saka's challenged by Nciso, goes down and stays down, Arsenal temporarily playing with 10, Odegaard though has found a ball through, into the penalty area goes Jorginho, pulls it back, Havers makes it 2-0, Kai Havers doubles the lead for Mikel Arteta's team, who it looks to me are going back to the top of the Premier League tonight, Saka had been down injured, but Arsenal played on, Odegaard and Jorginho combining to set up Kai Havertz to score his 10th goal for Arsenal. It is absolutely priceless. Well, it's a huge second, and Havertz does the easy bit in the end, tapping on that near post. All the hard work is done before, and it's brilliant from Arsenal out of possession. Because they turn the ball over two or three times, but Brighton, they can't play out. They're looking to play out, but Arsenal are aggressive. They're on the front foot. They win the ball back on two or three occasions. And it's Odegaard. He plays a really cute ball down the side of the 18-yard box. And it's a ball played into that near post area. I think it's Jorginho who makes the run. Havertz gets there first, stunts desperately on the lunge. He can't get there. Across the six yard box, Havertz there to tap in. Massive, massive goal for Arsenal. Freedom space. You really cannot overstate the importance of that goal. Kai Havertz, who scored against Brighton when these sides met in December. But that goal really sums up Arsenal's season for me. The intricate little passes, the movement, the element of surprise. You wouldn't have expected Jorginho to pop up there, breaking into the penalty area. And then to the byline, pulling it back, and arriving right on cue was Kai Havertz to make it Brighton nil, Arsenal 2, as this title race, can, you know, it's no longer simmering, it is bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Arsenal, if it stays like this, go top tonight. Liverpool could replace them tomorrow. Manchester City winning today to remain on the coattails for now. Substitutions have been made. Martinelli and Trossard on. And it's like for like with Saka and Gabriel Jesus making way. 
And uh, Brighton also made their double substitution as well. I'll tell you about that in a moment, but let's just discuss this this Arsenal change, the two wide men, Danny. Yeah, well, no surprises, really. It has been in a really intense game. Arsenal obviously got a big Champions League game coming up. They were actually getting stripped, the two substitutes, before that second goal went in, but you know, they have so much kind of quality, good depth from the bench now. Arsenal, but we can talk about how good they are in possession, but one of the biggest improvements of this Arsenal team over the last season or so is the work they kind of do off the ball, that high press, and that's where that second goal comes from. Yes, brilliant from Odegaard, we, we see him do that every week, but the work they do off the ball to win the ball back to make it so difficult for Brighton to kind of play out, that's where the second goal comes from. Well, the changes for Brighton, Joe Petro has come on in place of Jakob Moder, and Facundo uh, Buenanote has come on in place of Julio and Ciso, so it's a change of formation. Brighton are going to put two up top now, with Joe Pedro coming on to join Danny Welbeck. Here is Joe Pedro, number nine on his back, looking fit and fast, looking fresh. Rolls it out to the right-hand side to Tarek Lamptey for Brighton. Task doubly difficult now for Roberto to serve his team. 1-0, there's always a chance of the Premier League. 2-0, much more difficult. Here is Buenanote involved for the first time, but he gives it away on the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. Odegaard is careful in possession, gives the ball to Trossard, a few boos for Leandro Trossard from the Brighton fans who used to cheer him, and they do cheer here. They jeer him, really, because he slipped, and that's why they cheered as Brighton regained possession. Yeah, proper centre-forwards goal, that as well, from Havertz. He's done a lot of different things in this game, you know, dropping into midfield areas. We've seen him kind of pop up in wide areas. But then he gets in that goal-scoring position when Jorginho gets inside the 18-yard box. That's what he wants to see, an easy kind of pick-out. He's in the right area. It's a simple tapping in the end, but he's a really difficult player to play against Havertz. So many facets to his game. He's got that link play, the hold-up play. As I say, he's got that freedom to kind of drift into wide areas. A different, difficult player to kind of pin down. People wondered last season, what, what did Arsenal need? And I think there was universal acceptance that Declan Rice was, was exactly what they needed. They needed that energy and drive in midfield. And, and everyone said, I still need a striker. I don't think everyone was convinced when they first heard it that Kai Havertz was going to be the man to, to win the league for Arsenal. But, you know, he has been contributing to it. It's now eight goals in his last eight Premier League games between scoring and assists. And he is such an important part of how Mikel Arteta's team plays. Joe Petro tries to get into the penalty area for Brighton. He's got a Dingra available outside him on the left, and he slips Joe Pedro as he comes back to him. He's done well to get back up into his feet. He's up against his fellow Brazilian Martinelli, and Martinelli shields and shepherds him ten yards further back outside the Arsenal penalty area. The Amex Stadium, Five Live and BBC Sounds. This is the 5.30 Premier League kickoff this Saturday in April as Brighton trail 2-0 to title-chasing Arsenal. Carlos Baleba has positioned 15 yards outside the Arsenal penalty area. A Dingra tries a back heel, it comes off the shins of Saliba, and it goes out for a throw into Brighton. There's no time to waste as Pascal Gross takes it already. Baleba. Body language from Brighton is still good despite the 2 0 deficit. Estupinana plays a low ball into Buenanote. Poor first touch. Welbeck tries to make the most of it, and it's cleared away by Gabriel. Yeah, well, they will continue to play the same way, Brighton. Even at 2 0, nothing will change. Yes change in personnel from Rodrigo De Zerbi, but they will keep playing their football, keep knocking on the door, so from an Arsenal perspective, this game is still far from over, but I have to say they've controlled Brighton really well, Arsenal up until this point. David Raya hasn't had too many saves to make, just like Cecil won really in the first half, which was a good save. If you're up early in the morning uh, from 5.45am, you can listen to the Japanese Grand Prix, Max Verstappen looking to get back to winning ways. At 12 noon, Interim 5 Live will bring you Rangers against Celtic. Big game at the top of the Scottish Premiership. And three Premier League games tomorrow. Manchester United hosting Liverpool in the big one. That is a 3.30 kickoff. Unusual Sunday kickoff time. 3.30. You can listen to the game in full. And correspondent John Murray will be commentating here on 5 Live from Old Trafford. Here at the Amex, Pascal Gross has possession for Brighton. Gives it infield to Lewis Dunk. Brighton really trying to compress things and force Arsenal deep, they play so high up the pitch when they've got possession Van Hecke here, 15 yards inside the penalty area, gives it to the right hand side to Lamptey, Lamptey closely shadowed by Leandro Trossard so he gives it back in field again here's Baleba to Estupignan has a look up 
doesn't fancy playing it in too early. Odegaard dancing in front of him. Dunk makes himself available. Still 15 yards until the Arsenal penalty area. Central location. Shifts it onto the right hand side to Van Hecker. Now the pinpoint ball coming in low. Wasn't pinpoint enough. And Welbeck was beaten to it by Gabriel, who clears away. Yeah, just Arsenal with everybody behind the ball. Just closing those spaces down, making it really difficult for Brighton. We've seen them high press and on a number of occasions win the ball back off Brighton, but on this occasion, everybody behind the ball making it difficult. Lamptey for Brighton steps into the penalty area on the right hand side, gives it back for Danny Welbeck, who wanted to play the one two with Joe Pedro, but couldn't get onto the second leg of it. Arsenal haven't fully cleared. Van Hecker picks up possession. He's got Kai Havertz to deal with, and he twists and he swivels and he shakes off the German whose goal has given Arsenal the two goal lead here. Brighton will try their look down the left hand side with a Dingra. Doesn't quite get into the penalty area. Passes it back to Baleba. Over to Van Hecker. Infield to Dunk again. Similar patterns from Brighton. They're hoping they could tease open an opportunity. As Stupignon tries to cross it, it hits the upper body of Martinelli. Brighton hold on to possession, and they remain in the Arsenal final third. A Dingra again. 12 yards on the byline down the left-hand side. Plays it in low towards the feet of Buenanote. He can't control. Ben White gets a header on it, but there's no distance. Brighton get possession back immediately. In swinging cross from Dunk, too close to Raya. Arsenal breathe a sigh of relief as the goalkeeper holds it. Yeah, good passage of play from Brighton, control possession, but just finding Arsenal very difficult to break down. Here come Arsenal now, they've absorbed pressure for the last few minutes, they'd love to exert some, it's a shot from Trossard that's saved by his international colleague Verbruggen. It didn't seem to have an awful lot of pace in it, but Verbruggen was at full stretch as he got across to touch it out for a corner. Yeah, lots of space for Trossard to get into on that left-hand side. They break quickly off that Brighton attack, and he's just trying to catch Verbruggen out on that near post, full stretch, diving low to his right. Another good save from the Brighton keeper. Teclan Rice is going to take the corner. Arsenal take their time over this. There's 20 minutes to go. They're tuning up. There is no rush from Mikel Arteta's team point of view. Tommy Asu has been prepared as a substitute down below us. Not until after this corner, though. Arsenal who love to drag players right to the extremity of the penalty area, far side from where the corner is taken. And then they burst in, Havertz and Gabriel, and it's a header for Gabriel, that works time and time again. Too many bodies in the way though, and it's blocked. Saliba picks it up offside though as he got it the second time. And that is a free kick to Brighton. You know, it's, it's remarkable, you, you know exactly what Arsenal are going to do with those corner kicks, but knowing what they're going to do and stopping yeah. them doing it are two very different yeah, well, things. It looks like something that they've worked on. Gabriel just lurking on that far post, trying to find a mismatch. We saw in the first half against Pascal Gross, that could have been a possible penalty. Another one against Lamptey. Normally you see Arsenal where they have three, four, five bodies lined up on a far post and they all tend to run towards the near post, but they've not really done that one today, so it looks like one worked off the training ground where they're just trying to isolate Gabriel on the far post against a smaller man. Takahiro Tomiyasu, the Japanese international, comes on in place of Alexander Zinchenko. Fullback for fullback, as Arsenal look to see this through. At the start of today, Arsenal were second in the Premier League behind Liverpool. Manchester City won at Sellers Park early on, so City moved above Arsenal into second. Now, Arsenal on the verge of going back to top spot again. Liverpool could be at the summit of the table by tea time tomorrow if they win at Old Trafford. I mean, we talk about tight title races, but this has been way for thin. Free kick to Brighton for a foul on Estupignan. Gross gives it back to Dunk. Dunk plays it forward, and that's a rare long ball for Brighton, and Welbeck had anticipated it. He's got a Dingra in field of him, corner angle of the penalty area for Welbeck. He gives it to Joe Pedro, who couldn't hold on to with his first touch, and then that's a foul. Pascal Gross has cleaned out Leandro Trossard, free kick to Arsenal on the edge of their penalty area. You see how quickly Arsenal get bodies back there. Really good ball played over the top, releasing Welbeck. He cuts in off this left-hand side. He looks to play a square ball to Pedro. By the time he's touched it, you know, there's five, six, seven Arsenal bodies back. Fantastic intensity recovery runs to kind of get back in, and again, Brighton attack comes to nothing. If it stays like this, Arsenal will have taken 31 points from the last 33 available to them. It's, it's just a fantastic run they are on. That is title-winning form by any definition, but there are two other teams who've also got their eyes on that big prize, and... 
you know, the really remarkable thing is Arsenal could win every game to the end of the season and it still mightn't be enough. Yeah, all three teams could do yeah. that with the quality that they have. Here is Baleba, held up just short of the penalty area by Martinelli, who's really tapped into this tracking back ethos of the Arsenal team since his introduction. He and Trossard have done as much in defence as they have done in attack. Mikel Arteta's not taking anything for granted. I was listening to his interview on... Was it Wednesday night? Yeah, it was. It was Wednesday when they played Luton. And, and he was asked, you know, when it was 2-0 up, you, you still put on Declan Rice, were you still worried? And he said, I'm always worried. You know, 2-0, <laughs> it's no guarantee. The minute you decide you're not worried anymore, that's when things go wrong. And he does still look agitated down there, despite his team. I think it's fair to say, Danny, playing very well today. They yeah, deserve to be in front. They've been excellent. Could have scored more. But being really impressed with the defensive side of their game again, how they've controlled this Brighton team, who are a really difficult team to play against, but haven't really created too many clear-cut chances, Brighton. Have played some really good football at times, they've looked threatening at times, but the way Arsenal have controlled them out of possession has been equally as impressive as what they've done with the ball. It's not really the Brighton have done anything wrong today, it's just Arsenal have been better. Here is Dingra twisting and turning with Ben White on the left wing for Brighton. Roberto De Zerbi is preparing to make a change. Dringa gives it short to a Stupignon. This is just outside the Arsenal penalty area. Arsenal have done well today to keep Brighton out of the box. They've hovered on the periphery of it regularly, but... So few occasions that Brighton got into the penalty area. Stupignon plays the delivery straight to the gloves of the goalkeeper, Ryan. Now, Brighton needs something special. They need a sort of unknown element. They need... Just an X-factor, and maybe Ansu Fati could be the man to provide it. The youngster on loan from Barcelona is about to come on for the hosts. Well, they need to keep believing, Brighton. As I said, still time in this game for them to find a way back into it. Just looking to launch a quick counter-attack there. And David Raya just looking to pick a ball over the top. I think it's Havertz who gets dragged down by Belaber. Danny Welbeck is the player who makes way. Danny Welbeck, who had scored Brighton's last two goals in all competitions, scored against Liverpool last weekend, scored against Roma before that in, in Europe. He goes off against his old club to allow the introduction of Ansu Fati. It's Fati's first Premier League appearance in a month. He's got four goals for Brighton, two in the Premier League, two in the Europa League. Can he make this an exciting finish at the Amex? And so Arsenal come on the attack, Tommy Asu into the penalty area and for Bruin did well to dive out at his feet and win possession back for Brighton, Brighton who trailed 2-0 Baleba to Van Hecker, still inside his own penalty area back to the goalkeeper, onto Dunk, Brighton find a way to play their way out and They're not out yet <laughs> <laughs> Just as I said that, Dunk gives it back to the goalkeeper it's, it's a, a blinking game at times, cat and mouse is they tease Arsenal a little bit. Here's Joe Pedro to a dinger on the left-hand side. Ansu Fati has taken up a position to begin with, at least, in the centre. Vaneka into Arsenal territory, picks out Fati, gives it back to the Dutch defender once again. Tried to return it infield towards Pascal Gross, intercepted. Saliba for Arsenal, cleared away by Ben White, and again, anywhere will do. White is fouled as he clears it. Both players have hurt themselves there. So Buenanote, who's still down as Ben White gets to his feet. Yeah, he just comes across trying to block the clearance. Ben White clears the ball and just follows through with his leg and actually mm. catches Buenanote with his studs. Both players go down trying to draw the, the foul. Brighton, who have got so many talented youngsters and we've seen in recent seasons, they give them taste of the big time and then so many they sell on for for big profits. It's no wonder that other clubs keep trying to poach the backroom staff around here. Head of recruitment Sam Jewell is on gardening leave at the moment pending his move to Chelsea. Uh, profits recorded by Brighton for the last financial year. The biggest profit ever recorded by a Premier League team. Which when you think about it, you think of the massive clubs of the Premier League and the money that Brighton would post the biggest profit tells you everything and, and that doesn't even include those numbers were up to last summer so it doesn't include Moises Casado and the whatever that was 125 million to Chelsea yeah it's taken Brighton a fair bit of time to kind of get it to this point but a really well-run club fantastic kind of model that they have 
sure for a bit of this here be totally agrees with it. You know, he wants to know what the plan is for next season. It's been a more difficult season for Brighton, I would say. I think ninth position is still good for them with the amount of injuries that they had, obviously juggling European football as well, losing two of the best midfielders in the Premier League in Casado and McAllister. But it's a foul on Estupinian, and it's going to be a yellow card for Saliba. That's the first booking of the game. A yellow card for William Saliba. Brighton wanted to take the free kick quickly. Referee's got to write the name in the book, so that was premature. It will be a crossing position on the left-hand side for, for Pascal Gross. Saliba into the back of Estupinian. I mean, not the most violent foul you've ever seen, but the referee deciding that it deserved more than just a free kick. 11 minutes to play. It's an opportunity for Brighton here, so up to this point, they've defended these crosses, these set pieces really well, Arsenal, but we know he's got good delivery, Pascal Gross, can he get one of these on the money? Played in by Estupignon, an outswinger, Gabriel Rose, best for Arsenal, he wins so many headers in both penalty areas, does Gabriel. Gross gives it to Estupignon once again on the left-hand side. Brighton not giving up here, at Dingra up against Kai Havertz, the German stops him. Well-timed tackle, chance of a counter-attack. Odegaard gives it to Jorginho, Jorginho's lost it here to Ansu Fati. Now Buenanote, 10 yards outside the penalty area, central location, turns back at himself, weaves in between Jorginho and Odegaard, that was brilliant. Here's Ansu Fati, he's got a trick up his sleeve too. Down in the penalty area goes at Dingra, but the referee was close to it, and he says no penalty. Well, correct decision, but they just can't get a shot away, Brighton. Marcel are so quick to recover when they lose the ball, they've got bodies in the right area. Great feet from Buonanotte to create half a yard, but they never get a shot away in the end. Joe Pedro to. and Sufati scoops it high, Gross chests it down, here is it Dingra, he tries to cross it, it's deflected away out for a quarter. Well, you know, the reason Arsenal are in the title race Yes, it's got to do with their exhilarating attack, but it's got so much to do with their hard-as-nails defence, and they are doing great work here against a Brighton team throwing everything at it. It's a good spell for Brighton. Lots of possession in around Arsenal's 18-yard box, just not an FM product. Pascal Gros sends in the corner. It wasn't high enough, and it's headed away by Kai Havertz, the first defender, and that goes out for a throw into Brighton, who remain on the attack down the left-hand side. Speaking about how Brighton are run as a club and you think of other teams when things are going well You're worried if they're going to poach your best players. You're worried if someone else going to poach your manager Feels at Brighton that nobody's irreplaceable, you know, any one of these players could go and they would have this Production line some new South American you've never heard of who's brilliant who would be ready to, to step in and, and that includes the coach You know when, when Graham Potter left everyone thought that was going to be a crisis for for Brighton and even if Deserby goes I think they find someone else and it's 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 the plan of the club rather than the plan of the manager yeah planning and free planning is so important for this club you do wonder how long that kind of model can survive you get a couple of players that you know possible gems you think you've signed and maybe they don't perform you know how difficult this kind of league is there's a lot of things you need to get right so uh, they're going to continue with that model they're going to have to continue to keep unearthing these gems these rough diamonds and then obviously throwing them in and developing them. Odegaard takes the free kick for Arsenal, can't get it over the top of the backpedalling Estupignon, his header has only half cleared and Saliba will pick up possession for Arsenal inside the Brighton half. And Dingra gets in tight on Ben White and the ball goes out for an Arsenal throw on the right-hand side. Arsenal are almost there, two goals to the good, eight minutes of normal time to play. The goals came first in the first half, a penalty from Bakayo Saka, and then in the second period, Kai Havertz finished off a flowing move for his 10th goal for the club. Here's Martinelli into the penalty area, just wouldn't sit up for him. Thought like he was going to get a shot away, but he couldn't. And Verbruggen was out to make the save. Yeah, Dunk doing a good job. Just tracked the runner, Martinelli. Got himself kind of goal side, used his body just to usher that back to the goalkeeper. But Arsenal still pushing as well for a third goal. Brighton of Albion nil, Arsenal 2. Stupignon. Feeds it into Joe Pedro. Manchester United against Liverpool commentary to come tomorrow afternoon on Five Live. Joe Pedro hit the deck there. The referee says no foul. Brighton throw. Pascal Gross, who's been the creative hub for Roberto De Zerbi this season. First Brighton player to ever get into double figures for Premier League assists in a campaign. Stupignon challenged by Ben White. Joe Pedro picks it up. 
Cross again. Brighton back near the halfway line. Lewis Dunk looks up for options. Gives it short to Pascal Cross. Arsenal just need to keep it tight now. Just need to see this through. Big games to come, of course. Bayern Munich in the Champions League on Tuesday. Bayern have knocked us out of Europe three times in the last few years. Next weekend, back in the Premier League, it's Aston Villa at the Emirates for us, so that won't be an easy game. Estupinian comes forward for Brighton here. He's got a Dingra in a left-wing position. He'll play it back to Lewis Dunk. Arsenal really defending their penalty area now. Stretched out from one edge of it to the other. And as a cross comes in from Buenenote, and a Dingra will do really well to keep that in. He does keep it in, but he can't hold on to the ball. And Martinelli clears away in a different tactic now from Arsenal. Look at, look at Mikel Arteta. Stay. We do not need to come and press. You stay back there. He doesn't want the defence to push out them. No, they just got all their men behind the ball. Just trying to protect the 2 0 lead. So we saw them pressing high for most of this game and having a lot of joy with that, but just switching things tactically now with them having the two goal advantage, just dropping deeper, making it difficult for Brighton to find any space. Five live for the BBC, back heel by the corner flag from Martinelli. White clears it away, and again, anywhere will do, just get it down the other end. Think, says Mikel Arteta, think as he points his fingers to his forehead. Stupinian comes again. Brighton is seeing all of the ball. I bet you when the stats come at the end of the game, Brighton will have had more possession. But at the moment, Arsenal are letting them have it because they just want to defend the penalty area. Pascal Gross has it. Midway inside Arsenal territory, gives it to Buenenoche on the far side. There's so many remnants here of the Manchester City game of the Etihad, where City attacked and attacked, but couldn't get into the box to pull the trigger. That's what Brighton are experiencing now, and the chance of a breakaway. Trossard cannot be offside, because he was inside his own half, and Leandro Trossard can finish it here, and he does! It's 3-0 against his old team! Leandro Trossard surely wraps up the win for Arsenal on the south coast, and three points that are going to bring them to the top of the Premier League tonight in this title race that Arsenal refused to be pushed out of this time. Trossard surely seals the deal now. Brighton nil, Arsenal three, that's that. It certainly is, Connor. the icing on the cake for Arsenal. It's been a brilliant performance from them, it really has. And again, the goal coming from Brighton, giving the ball away in the central area. Trossard runs from his own half, he gets played in. He's got a lot of time to think about this finish, lots of different things going through his mind, I'm sure. Havertz plays him in, he's over the halfway line, in on the goalie. It's fantastic composure. Nil ding over the goalkeeper, but Bruggen goes down. What a brilliant moment of quality that is from Trossard. And that is the icing on the cake, as I say. Brilliant, brilliant performance from Arsenal. Leandro Trossard, who scored four Brighton against Arsenal two seasons ago. That is his 12th goal of the campaign for the club. He's Arsenal's second top scorer this season. It's been his best campaign since coming to England. And that is a goal that puts it beyond doubt surely now. Arteta's going to make two late changes. Brighton have given it everything, but Brighton, for you know all the plaudits they deservedly get, are not a title-contending team, and they have come up against a title standard in this game today, 3-0, and it really doesn't flatter Mikel Arteta's side. They had so many chances in this game. Down goes Ansu Fati, free kick to Brighton. They will battle on, but surely the goose is cooked. I think we all thought this was going to be a tricky game for Arsenal to navigate, but they really have done it. Flying colours, they've made light work of Brighton, you have to say. Arsenal fans celebrating behind the goal, their team are attacking. Brighton, who've pushed everyone forward, now have to get back again. Declan Rice bearing down on the Brighton penalty area. Has a shot from distance and it wasn't very far away. Deflected out for a corner. Well, Rice, he didn't sprint there, he sort of took it in a controlled manner to the edge of the penalty area. And he very nearly made it forward with that shot. Corner to Arsenal. Changes coming. Odegaard is going to be given a rest here. Fabio Vieira will come on for the closing minutes for the visitors. And Eddie Nketiah, who scored against Brighton in this fixture last season, 
he's got to get a run to replacing Kai Havertz. 3 0 Arsenal. Yeah, great for Mikel Atata to have this kind of luxury, able to kind of rest key players for that important Champions League game against Bayern coming up. But what a performance from this Arsenal team. As I said, a lot of people thinking this would be a tricky game for them. There's tricky games to come for them after this. Out of the three teams up there, they've probably got the more difficult of the run ins, but playing like this. Oh, they're the, the team out with a three, I think. Least likely to drop points. Arsenal fans behind that goal, their team attack, and uh, delirium. How much fun it must be to a, be an Arsenal fan at the moment. Still in the Champions League, of course, as well. They have had to wait a long, long time for one of the big trophies to get back in their trophy cabinet. Could this be the year? Havertz in swinging corner. Gabriel again at the back post. And it's saved, I think, onto the woodwork. Ball eventually ricochets down, still in play for Martinelli. Gabriel has won almost every corner that Arsenal have had today. Yeah, Brighton allowing that to happen again. Lamptey up against Gabriel. Here's Martinelli into the penalty area. Great turn of direction. Then he tries to put it on a plate for little Eddie Enketia, who couldn't spring high enough. He did get his head to it, but he couldn't power it downwards. And Enketia's header goes over the top. But Arsenal just thoroughly enjoying themselves now. Yeah, thirsty for more goals. and. You know, goal difference might be a factor come end of the season. It's very healthy for Arsenal at the minute. Another three today. A superb performance from them. As I said, you know, both sides of the game, not just what they've done with the ball. The, the work rate kind of out of possession as well, how difficult they've made it for Brighton. That's been the platform for the for the win. A stupid oh, yard to Simona Dingra. We've gone into stoppages at the end of the game. Five minutes to be added on. A Dingra loses his balance in the penalty area. Challenged by Saliba. Ball goes out for a corner. Corner to Brighton, but so many of their supporters have already, have already made their way towards the exits. And Brighton will rightly get a lot of praise, who are very good to watch, who've contributed massively to making this such an entertaining game but they have been picked off by superior opposition in this game of the Amex this evening corner's going to be taken by Pascal Gross again that one step run up that he does and he doesn't get enough height on it it's cleared away header of the front post by Enketia goes straight to a Estupignon back out to Pascal Gross who had taken the corner he returns it to Estupignon to the byline flashes in a decent cross controlled by Joe Pedro and his shot is deflected away by Gabriel and look at these scenes and you know Arsenal some people do mock and laugh with them, saying that they over-celebrate at times, but <laughs> they, the, the teammates swarmed around Gabriel there for making a block as if he scored a goal. Brilliant defending. You can see what it means for those Arsenal players. Like you say, Con, exactly like they scored a goal, but that's the level of focus and determination this Arsenal team has now. Ball played in, headed out by Ben White. I mean, there are goalkeepers who save penalties who don't get celebrations from teammates as enthusiastic as that. Ball is played back into the penalty area by Pascal Gross for Bright and then battle on. Here is Ansu Fati on the left-hand side, gives it to a Dingra. But Brighton have not been able to get into the penalty. They have danced and hovered around the periphery all afternoon, but they have not been able to get into the box. It has been a no-go zone as Arsenal absolutely lay a hand of steel. Just the, the authority, the iron dome they've put on that penalty area has been so impressive. Yeah, so well drilled. If they hang on here, Arsenal, I think it's six clean sheets in the last kind of eight games, so you can see why. Well drilled team. Yeah, that's why the goal difference is so good. And as uh, Danny's been alluding to, Arsenal with a much better goal difference about Liverpool and Manchester City. They score a lot, they don't concede many. Here is Trossard, whose third goal has really made this a comfortable finish for Mikel Arteta's team. A drinker plays it back under pressure from Martinelli. All the way back to the goalkeeper for Bruhe. Um, Brighton's next game, they travel to Burnley in the Premier League on Saturday. The next Premier League visitors here to the Amex are Manchester City. And will City fair as well on this pitch as Arsenal have done today? Because it's not easy, you've got to play really well here to win, and Arsenal have done. Yeah, you've got to get both sides of the game right, and Arsenal have this evening. You know, Brighton will play this well and beat a lot of teams in the Premier League. They've still got something to play for with their remaining games. They're pushing for Europe again, so uh, this is the result they're going to have to move on from quickly. This is going to be a first defeat in 15 home games for Brighton. The supporters are not used to seeing their team lose here. There's been plenty of draws. No visiting team has won here in the Premier League since August. Stupignon 
challenge by Martinelli on the left wing. Estupin does well to ride the tackle, but then he can't hold off Jorginho. And that's going to be a free kick to Arsenal. Estupin in his attempts to push the Italian international away has given away a free kick. And we are into now the final 90 seconds of the five minutes being added on for stoppages. Yeah, it hasn't been too bad today up until Arsenal's 80 yard box from Brighton, but as soon as they've got in and around near, they've just kind of run out of ideas. So many Arsenal bodies getting back into position quickly and making, making it really difficult for Brighton to skip past the man, cross the ball into the box, thread a ball in behind. And a really good defensive display from Arsenal, and you have to defend well here at the Amex with the football that Brighton played, but they've just not had the answers this evening. 6 or 6 coming up with Natalie Pike and Chris Sutton very shortly here on 5 Live. Your chance to get on the air and air your thoughts on that, the football action up and down the land and up and down the leagues. Uh, the number to get involved tonight, 0805 909 693. That's 08085 909 693. Maybe you're an Arsenal fan celebrating another very important win that propels your team to the top of the Premier League tonight. Arsenal fans will be sleeping easy. They'll sit back and enjoy Liverpool's attempts at Old Trafford tomorrow. There's uh, dangerous stretches in the penalty area here, but he can't keep the ball away from Ben White. White with a right foot across that he couldn't get the elevation on. Fabio Vieira jumps and he's trailing arm there. And I don't think he meant it, but he was leaping in the air and his arm cut the face of Gerald Pedro. And that is going to... Oh! Well, no, I was going to say, surely that wasn't going to be a yellow card for that. It's a yellow card for Ben White for complaining about the decision. So the decision itself was just a free kick. But Ben White complained and John Brooks showed him a yellow card for that. Brighton nil, Arsenal three. Closing stages, closing seconds, really. And there is the full-time whistle from John Brooks as once again, Mikel Arteta's team get the job done. The Premier League, Premier League lead changes hands for the 20th time in this epic title race season. It is Arsenal who move back to the top now, ahead of Liverpool's visit to Old Trafford tomorrow. For Brighton, their first home defeat in the league since August. Arsenal are still unbeaten in the Premier League in 2024. The penalty from Saka, then two goals in the second half from Havertz and Trossard. And Arsenal looked the business Danny Gabbard on here. Title-winning performance, Connor. Super, super impressive performance from this Arsenal team. Tricky fixture this coming to the Amex for them. And they look fully focused, they really did, and dominated in all departments. Made light work of Brighton in the end. Could have scored more goals. But for me, the platform to the performance wasn't what they did with the ball, it's what they did without it. How hard they worked for each other, how difficult they made it for this kind of Brighton team. And it could have been more goals in the end. So uh, to resp respond so well off the back of that Man City result earlier in the day, and now to throw the pressure back on Liverpool now tomorrow, that's exactly what Mikel Arteta would have wanted. So uh, top, top draw performance. I still have done what they needed to do this band of brothers and you can see the cohesion between them you can see the camaraderie they walk down 